This version of It's Eric Nagel has been modified from its original broadcast. Content has been edited to fit this platform. It's Eric Nagel. And it starts now. Ladies and gentlemen of the universe, the next voice you hear, it's Eric Nagel. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of It's Eric Nagel, and that is myself. Over there, that is the lovely and talented Zia. Hi! And uh, just below her is uh, the lovely and talented Giddles. I wouldn't say I'm either of those things, but I am here. All right, Giddles. Giddles. You are lovely and talented. Don't oh. sell yourself short. Oh, I do. It's great selling yourself short. <laughs> I do the same thing. It's okay. He's very well groomed and kempt. That is so untrue. We talked about my hair last week and how I look like I'm from the 16th century. Let's not let's not go there. Somebody wrote me and said that that side profile where your hair was going out says it looks like when they do the test to show aerodynamics, like yeah, when the wind is going. Aerodynamics, <laughs> as I like to call it. Correct. So I'm telling you, he could be falling, man, or like running against wind, man. You know, you do that, and the wind is blowing everything back. I'm like a guy who doesn't need to be photoshopped into a windy day guy. Like, Yeah. Like, you, we don't need to put the wind, just look at his hair. You need to be sitting, uh, sitting on a chair in front of a television with neon lights and then putting in, what was the cassette tape? Was it Maxell? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah the, or the, Memorex? It was Memorex or Maxell, but I remember P- Putting it, yeah. the cassette tape in Memorex. and then sitting down, and as he's sitting there, the power of the audio coming from that cassette tape through that stereo system... He sat there in this big chair, and then, like, his drink, his wine glass or whatever, is sliding off the table because of the intensity of the sound, and he just kind of nonchalantly moves his hand over to grab the wine glass and brings it over yeah. and takes a sip, while the lamps and everything else in the room are going flying. We should do that. We should recreate that with Giddles. Yeah. And then a week later, they came out with the CD, and they just threw that commercial out the window. They're like, fuck tapes. They sound like <laughs> shit, and they're not loud at all. And then they were like, here, here, here's, this, here's a little mini record. That's in- that's not yeah. what happened at all, and you know that. I know. No, I what know. happened was they used the same commercial, but it was just poorly edited where he's popping a CD in. And then it cuts right back to the original commercial. He sits down, and the glass starts going. Everything's blowing. Uh, it's like, oh, geez. this has a multiple of uses. Anytime a new technology comes out, we just replace those five frames, and we're good. Is this oh an God. 80s commercial? Yes. Should we so, do that for this it? show? It'd be like it, the It's Eric Nagel podcast coming to Twitch Live, and we just all recreate that stupid commercial with the wind. Yeah. And then our heads explode, explode because the show's so yeah. bad. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. But anyway, for this terrible show, if you want to be a part of it, 651 Smithers, 651 764 8437 is the phone number to get in touch with us. Follow us on all the social medias at It's Eric Nagel. And uh, like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We had a bit of a, of a busy week, so the video for last week's wasn't up, but it's going up with this week. So you're getting two okay. in one shot. Old, old Nerdy was asking about that. He said he was clicking on it, but it was just audio. He didn't see any video. Yeah, the video was not up there. Uh, it will be. Sorry, it's just been a super busy week with all How my properties and everything going on. And uh, a lot of snow again. Non-stop up here. It just keeps coming. Yeah, this isn't last week's show, even though we're talking about last week's show. Last week's show, we talked about how we got 30-plus inches of snow in my area, uh, where Giddles is. Zia, not as much. But this new round of snow is supposed to hit her area more than it's supposed to hit us. So We ha, already ha, had ha, a ha, shit ton ha. of snow. That first round was a lot. Yeah. Like It might not yeah, have been 30 inches, but it was at least two feet. Right. Yeah, and well, you get those drifts and you get like, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes you're walking and then you're like, oh, wait, it's up to my neck. And then you're like, send one of those dogs with the whiskey barrels. I'm going to die. <laughs> like, oh, I'm just going to run down to the store. I'm going to get something and you open up and the, the snow is as high as the door and you go, I'm not going anywhere. Yep. I'm going to have to alert. I'm going to have to live off of uh, Cheetos and stuff I find in the couch for the next two days because this is frozen. It's not going to thaw out. Well, that's what happened to us. We had no food that the night that the snow hit and it got really it was so bad. We definitely couldn't go anywhere and we didn't have any food. I forget what we ended up eating. Oh, my God. What the fuck was it? Was it the new couch that didn't work? Was it what? Was it your new couch that didn't work? Whoa, don't get me started on that piece of shit. Actually, no, get me started. Okay. well, we'll finish the snow and then we'll get to that. We just had ramen. That's what it was. I remember we had ramen because we had gone. No, no, it wasn't bad. I forgot I had gotten like four different ramen packets from one of the Asian stores that we went to. And I was like, oh, my God, that's right. This came in perfect and came in handy because we had nothing else. It was either that 
or I think we had one row of saltine crackers left. Well, I do have to commend you on the fact that you said you, you really didn't have much. Being a uh, transplant to the East Coast for one of the worst winters in many years, mm-hmm. um, you didn't overreact and freak out like people who've been living here their entire lives, where they run out and like, I got to get... <laughs> the whole thing of you know loaf of bread, container of milk, stick of butter, all that shit doing there because apparently all you have in a snowstorm is French toast all the time, and these people go out and they go crazy and like like this is a national tragedy that's happening and that you're never going to get this food again. You underprepared. You didn't even prepare for the snow. So I give you credit for not going crazy, but you do have to step up your game a little bit. So anytime they tell you these things in advance. You don't have to go nuts, but just buy a couple extra things and then before that storm's coming so that you're not there the day of or the day before when everyone else is jam-packed and Target in the supermarkets going crazy. It's like, how have you lived here all your life and you still don't know how to deal with all of this? Yeah, we did that. We did that for this week because it was supposed to snow this week. It looks like it changed a little bit. We're not getting as much snow, but... Or it's going to get pushed back, so we'll go again. But we did for this week. We're like, all right, we need to get at least enough stuff for the week. Well, it's snowed so today. Good. Uh, well, last did, night into today for the day last that we're, we're doing the show, and the what? So it snowed last night. It was bright and sunny here all day. So I don't know. If yeah, yeah, it, it was. Uh, yeah, it was. Well, Mid morning, it was. Yeah, though. it was sunny here. Um, but I we got like two inches of snow, which compared to everything else, not that big a deal. Still annoying because that's the third snow in two weeks. But then there's supposed to be something next week, like Tuesday or Wednesday in the northeast. That's coming. And I was seeing on the news, it's trailing all the way down to Texas. They're showing parts of Dallas getting ice storms and everything. And like, it's like, oh, this is this whole stream that's coming here. It's still coming our way. We're going to get this next week. It's like, you know, when you have it too good and you just say, look, these have been mild winters. You go out and it's maybe 40, 50 degrees all the time. And like, oh, you know, I kind of miss snow. I really wish it would snow again. And then this happens and you go, nope, I'm leaving this state. If I can well, leave, I mean, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, but it hasn't been that bad. Like, I mean, up until we had this snowstorm, it's been a relatively mild winter. No, that's we what had I'm like saying. one week in like October and November where like it was like 10 degrees for like a couple oh, of yeah, days. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then the next day, it was like 60, 90. Yeah. Like, it literally jumped from like 10 to 90 in like two days. So, when like, we first moved here, yeah. it was like between 75 and 80. <laughs> yeah, and, and that was only like a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah, it was like during the election. Yeah, so it was November. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. But yeah. like, yeah, like the last couple of years, like it's been doing this thing where it's like it's like a climate shift where everything is happening like a month to a month and a half later. Mm-hmm. And it's just going that way where it just feels like it's almost predictable now. Like the first winter you had, you're like, oh, this is kind of weird. It's like a little warmer now. You get some snow in like April. Like, I feel like we got snow this last year in May. You know right. what I mean? And then summer didn't feel like it started till July. Winter doesn't feel like it's starting till December, January now. Like it's just everything is a little off. Right. I don't know. All of September was warm summer weather still. Very warm. Um, For some reason, I don't know if it was just because of the way life goes and they try to live by the calendar rather than what actually is occurring in the world where we would go to school here uh, on the East Coast or in the North. uh, School starts after Labor. It's the Monday after Labor Day. Sorry, the Wednesday after Labor Day. So Labor Day is first Monday of September. That following Wednesday was a lot of the school start up in the in the Northeast. And that was supposed to be, oh, that's the last weekend of summer. Now you're starting school, starting work, whatever. And it's supposed to feel like fall in September. And it never does. I For some reason, I think it did. Or maybe I just was told to think that way or whatever kind of conditioning. But the last... 20 years or something when we hit september it's like no just because labor day is over you know i'm still going down uh to the beach or into the pool or whatever we're going this is going until october you know we had a hurricane 2012 uh, hurricane sandy hit the right before halloween it was warm it was enough like- weather that the hurricane hit yeah it was that was crazy because that happened like t- like two weeks before halloween then halloween we had snow like it was like yeah. that was that was a that was a horrible fucking fall winter. Jesus, I remember that. It was just like people homeless, no power, like still digging water and sand out of their apartments, and then it fucking snowed and iced on top of them. Like just how much worse could you? Yeah, get? my my brother's house where he lives down in uh, you know that area of Queens, uh, the um, the Barrier Beach communities yeah. down there, uh, Rockaway Point, Breezy Point, all that. 
Um, all those people had the ocean and the bay meet. Like all of that yeah. was underwater during the hurricane, and that took like a day or two for that to subside. And then people were digging out their basements of their house. And if you had any kind of finished basement, it was gone because all the windows gave out. And and they were. I I remember for weeks I was down there with my brother, uh, with the sump pumps and everything else, sucking all the water out there, letting it dry, then trying to scrape off the insulation that turned to like clay from the yep. walls and then you had to gut the electricity and the wiring and then when that was done you had to re- cut out all the you had to test every beam and the and the uh, not even just the support beams but all the um cosmetic fixture kind of things so all much. had to be gut- gutted his hot water heater had to go because that was contaminated with salt water um yeah, it took months to and he was doing it himself like every day he would go out to work and at night he'd be up all night with uh you know, generators or um, uh, those clamp lamps, you know, that you would hang. A clip light. Yeah. I have one right over here. <laughs> and uh, just been working on it nonstop till he got it uh, all set and done. And uh, then because you can't wait for the insurance. And then the city had because it's technically part of New York City had that ordinance where any of those coastal properties now had to be lifted. Uh, the houses had to be lifted up over a certain amount of feet. <clears throat> like if you were on the ground, your house now had to be on like at least five foot stilts. Yeah, like my friends live out in Long Beach, and there's still people like retrofitting their houses on stilts out there to this day. Oh like, yeah, because still, the like, city program and that, like, w- and they're all like, and that's not even city. That's you know that's Nassau County, but like, there every house is 20 feet higher than it was. Yeah, you know, the uh, crazy. the maybe that was a, a county ordinance for on their part, but I mean for the one in Queens, the city was to do it. You couldn't hire a private company to come in to do it. The city had some kind of contract, whatever, that they had to do it, and they were scheduling the appointments. And this was taking forever. Like, it took years before my, uh, uh, I think my sister's house out there had to get lifted. My brothers didn't, but my sisters did. And then all of a sudden, the city, they just, after a few years, you're like, all right, well, I guess we don't have to do this. Then all of a sudden, hey, uh, here's a notice from the city. You have to be out of your house for six months. Because they got to come in and uh, shut everything off, all the gas line, water line, power line, re, you know, dig out your house, lift it up, build a whole new foundation that's extended. So when I go it's over basically to a ha- like building a new house, yeah, like it looks, it's just it's so much work. They all look ridiculous. I every yeah. time I go over there, there's a wall, like a six foot wall. Bef- so the stairs got to go up this way, and then they go up the side of the house before you can get to the house. The door to the house is almost 15, 16 feet above sea level just to get into the house I mean, that's great exercise you run down the beach and you run up the stairs like boom built-in gym every day is bay watch living every day out is there. bay watch exactly yeah and you watch the bay from 30 feet higher it's like oh there's the bay <laughs> there's my car there's my property there's everything i paid for in my life just going right into the bay i'm Hi. glad i live here. <laughs> just yeah. waving goodbye to it bye <laughs> bye life bye. <laughs> ever see a guy say goodbye to his shoe once yeah. bye life bye kids oh well bye so we'll replace all of that stuff. But yeah, uh, yeah. You can replace it. It's no problem. So yeah, a lot of snow. It's been uh, cold. It's been weird. It's been warm enough for everything to melt, but then it like instantly freezes again as the sun goes down. So I have these giant killer looking icicles from all angles of uh, of my roof. And some like of my, like, like a final destination like type one where you go outside and you're like, oh, fuck, I'm going to slip and then head. this thing's going to cut me in half. Yeah, this and, thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's how big the, the, these things are. The one I, I was trying to estimate, it's up on the third part of my house and it's like that at the base. Yeah, that'll oh. that'll go right through you. Yeah, that'll straight up stab you. I'm trying to throw the, the uh, I have a big push broom. I'm just trying to launch that up there to knock it down. And it's I just, I'm you know, I'm breaking windows and popping out of you know wall fixtures but i'm trying to get it down i was like all right well i'm not going out the back door of my house until all this is gone no i mean there remember there was a time uh when we when uh we were doing the show out of your basement and i was like coming over and there was one time where it was icy like that and i remember we were outside throwing snowballs trying to knock them down and i think it was, oh, Andrew. Yeah. It was just like what are you guys doing you're gonna break a window we're like we're trying to not die by icicle <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're just like hawking them there and Monty's like running in circles trying to catch the snow as it was falling yeah, yeah that was fun yeah you go down the the whole uh you go down the whole uh at least my block and part of the neighborhood here they all have it so it looks like when um the day after tomorrow right as the, the uh, oh, yeah. eye of the storm is hitting and everything does a flash freeze that's how it all looks like 
it's cool, but you know that's dangerous. Oh yeah. So we got more still to come, and uh, it's only February. Oh great! Early February. I'm really excited about my first winter here. I'm really glad I moved. Yeah. Yep. And then well, you, it's there's no droughts or earthquakes, so you got to take your. That's true. There's no that droughts. Is true. Take there's, one. Take take where you can get it here. I guess there's no droughts. <laughs> there's no earthquakes. The state is getting uh, um, recharged with uh, vaccines next week. So there's going to be a lot more appointments. That's exciting news. I got a I yeah. got an email from the state and from the county. Uh, you know, they told me a while, like a month ago I was approved, but then they kept telling me, "Oh, there's no appointments and nothing's available." But you're approved, so I can't sit here. And then I'm seeing on the news when like the when they're showing local news, and there's people who are vaping that are getting approved for this thing because that's smoking and that's a condition. It's like. <laughs> All right, fine. Self inflicted doesn't count. Go fuck yourself. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, I don't want to be mean, uh, but as a person who goes out to the stores and like shops around a lot and stuff like that, I've noticed that the people who, let's just say the elderly, right. uh, like are the people who flaunt the rules the most. Like, I don't Dude. think you've been out to stores, but like, they do not wear masks. They do not do anything. They pull them down to look, talk to you. Like, they get in your face. It's like, why do you get, you're the highest risk person for this. You're in number one for vaccines and you're t- doing nothing to take care of yourself. Like, Gittles, I've what are you that doing? Yeah. Even back in LA and even moving here, but in, in, in LA, I feel like a lot more just because, like, out and about, like, here, it's not really walkable as much as it was in LA where I just, I live in a neighborhood where you walk. Yeah. yeah. But I noticed that so much. Old people do not give a fuck. Nope. They're not wearing masks. I, dude, I saw one guy. Maybe he was this guy was just like death is coming. I don't give a shit. But he was like, <laughs> yeah, right. Fucking like all <laughs> slow with his walker, just walking along. No mask on. No fucks given. I saw another old lady. No mask on walking with a walker and someone next to her like she was that old. Like, but it's got to be where maybe they're just like, why? Why the fuck do I care? I'm about to die anyway. Like, I don't know. Well, yeah, but, I mean that's my that, but that's my point. If your if your your thoughts are like I don't have to wear a mask, I'm gonna die anyway. Why are you getting the vaccine first? Like I'm not trying to be a dick, but like that's you know, if point, you're at yeah. the high risk group and you're not doing everything to prevent something that's like easily preventable by wearing a mask, like I don't know, like it sucks, right? Like I'm a young I'm a young guy who needs to get back into the workforce. Why should I have to you know wait on a shot because some 98 year old woman who could barely walk down the street, like you know, and doesn't want to wear her mask, right? Gets one first. Like I don't I'm not trying to be mean or ageist. It's just it's a really weird thing because we're trying to get the economy going and I need to contribute. <laughs> like it's just I don't know. I hope yeah. I, I don't sound heartless. For I that. haven't seen that. I'm, like, not, I'm not. I'm not denying that it, it, it that it's happening. I haven't seen that, and I've been out oh, to, yeah. like you know, I got a once in a while commute into the city. I got to you know go to the supermarket to Home Depot, things like that, basic stuff. Yeah. But yeah. um, I haven't seen the most. Of the, the most I've seen of elderly people have been usually the supermarket. If you go in the morning, they're there. But they're all there. Like, it's a whole crowd of old people there. But they've all been kind of bundled up. So I, I haven't seen the uh, the uh, the arrogance, if you will. Oh, dude, or, like, or I the, wonder. It, it's so bad. Like, we're, we're, we're giving out food to the soup kitchen. Like, I literally have to, like, push people. Like, physically push people because they're, like, standing this close on top of each other. No one's wearing oh. masks. And they're just, like, blah, 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 like, just spitting. And you're, like, dude, please. Like, we, I actually wear, like, two different face shields when I do it because they don't wear masks and just spit all over you oh. when they talk. And they, they take their mask down because they assume my ears don't work. Like, I can hear through your mask. Like, it's totally fine. Please wear your mask. Like, you don't have to take it down to talk to right. me. Right. But like, I don't know, it's just it's around here, at least. And I don't know, maybe it's because everyone in my neighborhood is more like foreign. Like, it's a lot of old Polish people. They don't speak English. So uh, maybe it's just like stuff. a lost in translation thing. I, I don't know. But like, it's really upsetting that like no one takes it seriously here. That is upsetting. Uh, like yeah. I, I said, I haven't seen that, but thing. I would be upset if exactly what Gittle said. You know, my parents are down in. Uh, you know, an area of Florida where a lot of um, retired people live, not like a community, but the part of the state, you know, on the East Coast, Southeast Coast of Florida, where a lot of transplants and, and people are down there. And the, a lot of them, uh, from what my mom was telling me, is that they're all very like they don't go do anything. They're all mad. 
because they see all these younger people down in Florida with nothing on. It's like the reverse from what you're yeah, saying. All these younger people just going out to the bars and restaurants and they're in the the supermarkets or a Walmart or something. They're coming in. They don't they're screaming about their masks or not wearing it or they get in and as soon as they're in, they take it off and do whatever. And then. You know, my my dad's got you know, immunity issues, and my, so my mom, when she has to go out and get stuff, she gets pissed because she starts seeing all that. She's like, I can't even go to that store anymore. Yeah, it's it's bad. Like I don't know. It's just I don't I don't get it. Like it it like I mean and and like don't get me wrong. I see young people out and stuff like that. It's just the thing is like if a young person's in a store and someone says, Hey, you got to put your mask on, they immediately do it. If an old person's at a store and someone's like, put your mask on, they're like, why do I have to do it? I like the amount of old people I've literally seen get dragged out of supermarkets because they're refusing to wear their masks is insane. Like this, this sh- it shouldn't be happening. Like, I don't get it. Yeah. But hopefully they'll just be able to open the vaccines up and everyone could just get in. So I don't have to like sit around and hope that this person who has a, a hole chewed through their Right. mask that they haven't replaced in seven months <laughs> well leading back to why i initially brought the this up was with the vaping stuff because i was seeing on the local news it's like oh it's like they were asking it's like how did you qualify for whatever and he's like oh because you know i've been vaping for a couple of years and i was like how is that enough to qualify i mean it i get it, it it's it's fucking up your circulatory system you know and and breathing by doing that even <laughs> if it's just you know m- like uh marijuana or something it's still the way it's being inhaled can fuck up your respiratory Are you system. telling me i can go to the front of the line eric possibly you can because <laughs> it, it's all by <laughs> smoke it, a joint and show up <laughs> uh, the weird thing too is that because <clears throat> there's no federal mandate and all this stuff it's all by the states and then the states broke it down by the counties so the way that you qualify yeah. and the way it's distributed is changes per county. So what might qualify over here might not be the same what's over in New York, you know? So, yeah, go online. Go look. Uh, it's usually the COVID-19, whatever the dot .gov uh, address is for your state and then you usually just put COVID-19 dot whatever your state is dot gov yeah. and they, it goes right to the page and gives you all the information how to find it in your state your county what have you also the reason to, so when I see all these vapor people they were getting it and it's like vapor same people, people who are I'm fucking smoke I'm a vapor person Sorry. wispy apparitions watch out I can't, a breeze is coming I don't want to die I again. can't do oh. the Ted wispy apparitions that Something wasn't like that. horrible. It wasn't that good, was, but yeah. It wasn't good, but it wasn't. Was good that Ted a Chuckler. duck impression? What was that? I don't even understand. It was Daffy Duck mixed with Ted Checkler. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you're seeing these younger people getting in, and I'm like, you know, I have people in my family that can't get it because of medical stuff. They can't get the vaccine. So it, it makes sense for me to get it so I can be around them, and I can't. So I can't see my parents until I get it. I can't, you know, see some yeah. other people in my family till I get it. And they, like my mom, I think my mom and dad just got it this past Sunday. They finally found an appointment that that got them in for their first shot. Um, I'm still trying to find out how to get my first shot. It just was driving me nuts when I was seeing all these other people. It's like you really shouldn't be qualifying for this, but the they this whole thing is being run so poorly that the people are getting in and getting whatever. I'm all I'd for everybody getting it. The, I'd be interested to look into the vaping thing as like a front of the line pass. Because like, you fill out online and you uh, under smoking or chronic smoking or whatever the the tech the the specification is for the smoking, they put it under there and in parentheses says vaping or or something like that, and that's how they qualified for it. It's self. That's what annoys me so much about it. That is self inflicted. It's not like something you don't have control over, right. like a like a, a medical issue that you don't have control over. An underlying uh, condition. That's the word I was looking right. for. An underlying condition. It's not like that where you don't have any control over that. You're the dumbass that's slowly killing yourself with cigarettes or vaping or whatever it is. It's like you're. I. That's what I don't understand about about smoking. Right. Well, and I used to smoke. <laughs> Look well, I just think it's, it could be one of those things where, like, yeah, this came out and, like, no one expected a pandemic lung disease to, like, get to this point where, like, 450,000 people are dead. And maybe they're just like, you know what? Uh, vapors can still infect other people. So, and they're constantly. Yeah, they're pushing their, their uh, decorative smokes out. Constantly breathing yeah. their I air out. Bullshit. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like. Yeah. 
Because vapors are worse than smokers. Like I'm like as yeah, a smoker, they do it it's fucking like fucking everywhere. They do it everywhere, and they try and get as much Inside. out as they can. It looks like a drag race of a car burning their tires. You're like, dude, Smoke like why horrible. is there a chimney of donut smoke coming out of your mouth? And like you're doing tricks with it. Their dogs jumping through it. I'm like, get the fuck. I'm out of smelling here, the flavor that you enjoy. And it's, yeah, it's like, like I, grossly I shouldn't be diluted. breathing in cake. Like yeah. I, that's just not where it's one thing when you see it. the people that look like they're smoking like a like a memory stick. You know, those kind of things. It's the ones yeah. that oh, yeah, yeah. look like they have a fucking battery backup to it. Oh, yeah. It's like it's like a square. Yeah, thing it's a big like square. A it's a big look. It makes like a popping sound where I'm like, oh, that shouldn't make a crackling yeah, sound. Is that good? Like, uh... Oh, Eric's going to break out his vape now to no, show no, us. It looks like this, <laughs> you know, when they That's have the portal gun. I know, but yeah. it looks like the big thing here, the base where they Kinda smoke. Does. And then they usually have the little jar for their flavoring on there. And they're just going in through like that. And then they disappear to another yes. world after yes. they've infected it. Would. Sticks of ram stuck to a thing. Yeah. And, oh, wait, this is just a sandwich. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All of that. <laughs> uh, food sandwich. But, uh, you know, I have to get that done and then I have to get, and this is hilarious too, I have to get the inspection of my car done because it, apparently the... Uh, is your car going to get vaccinated? Does your, your car vape? My car, um, yeah, it does vape. Ooh, that's that's something you need to get checked out. Yeah, it vapes out its exhaust pipe. And the inspection sticker apparently expired May of 2020. So I haven't used that car. I have two cars. I haven't used that car in a while. So I was uh, when I realized it, I said, oh, this is past inspection. I have to go get this done. I don't want to get a ticket. And then I spoke to a mechanic, and uh, they were telling me, it's like, oh, you can get away with that for now. So what do you mean? And they say, well, if you, you, he's like, I don't recommend you drive, but if you get pulled over, you're in the middle of the pandemic. You haven't used the car in forever. They'll give you a pass on that. There's more bigger things out there uh, that they have to worry about than the inspection on your car. So yeah. I said, all right. So I went online and I have an appointment to to go uh, next week to go get it done. Um, I thought my reg. This is how dumb I was too. <clears throat> I was on the website looking. I thought it, that sticker meant your registration for the car. I didn't know that was inspection. So I'm going through the whole process about re-registering your car. And they said, if, you, if it's been past six months, you have to go through this portal and do it this way. And I'm looking back, I'm like, wow, it's been more than six months. I'm going to have to do all this stuff. And then I realized it's, it says you're about to register your car and I'm putting the information in. And then it says this car's registered. And I'm like, how is this possible? And then I read, oh, it's inspection. I'm dumb. I, yeah, I'm I didn't realize. So guy. that's a new thing for me here. When when we went to take Nick took the car in to get the new registration and get the new plates and get the inspection and all of that, where they have at the DMVs, they have actual places that you go get inspections. Yeah, it's like a drive through almost. Yeah, yeah, I've never seen that. We don't have that in Hawaii, and they don't have that in LA. LA is worse. From everything I read online, LA is so difficult. Um, if you bought a car in another state and brought it to California, or you moved to California. It has to be updated and everything for green admissions and all and carb. I mean, sorry, carbon emissions and, and their green initiative. And, yeah, you get a smog check. Yeah, all of this stuff and and uh, you can just go to a random place and do that. It's not at the DMV. I understand, but I'm saying th what qualifies for your inspection is harder in California than it is in other states in the United States. Yeah, it's also I went in when we got our I got my new license, my New Jersey license, I guess officially I'm a Jersey and now or whatever. Uh, they Jersey? just print. Yeah, a, I, I, don't, I don't know. Is that, is that what you call it? <laughs> they printed it and gave it to me right there, which I thought was crazy to me because in L.A. you have to they send it to you like a month later. Right. Yeah, yeah a lot of out of state unsigned, unlaminated license is good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, a lot of shit out in California is nuts. I mean, not that everything in the, uh, everywhere else is fantastic, but the more and more shit of this goes on, the more you find out about what California is actually doing. Um, and it's for people on the East Coast or other areas of the country that don't really pay attention to California as much. Even though California th and LA thinks they're like you know sometimes they're they're center of the world. I would actually disagree and say that more of the country knows what's happening in California and New York than anyone knows what's happening in the middle of the country. I can see that. As far as their what's taxes in, and their what's structure happening and all in that? Kansas right now, Eric. Uh, they're enjoying good ribs and steak and barbecue. See, you, you have no idea. And their football team <laughs> lost. So, actually, wait, no, that's St. Louis. 
Uh, no, so that's Missouri. Kansas City is in Missouri. Yeah. There's Kansas City, Kansas, which is like a prison town. And then there's Kansas City, Missouri across the river, which is the Kansas City everybody knows. Springfield and Shelbyville. That's who they are. Pretty much it is. Um, so in California, I was seeing this uh, news report and then I clicked on their thing to read more about it online. So tax time is around now. And they're giving extensions and, and what have you because of the pandemic. But you got to start filing your taxes for last year. So this is where the pandemic comes into play because this is your 2020 taxes. And they're, and California is the biggest culprit of this. They are trying to tax people who moved out of the state because of the pandemic. They're trying to label uh, uh, push a penalty tax on them for leaving the state. That's so, so fucked up. This is something yeah, you're going to have to have. You're going to have to have an accountant look at this for you, Zia, for your stuff. Great. So California has been uh, because there's been a depending what people say, there hasn't been a mass exodus. There's been a mass exodus. There's been enough people to make it significant for that state that people have left that state. They moved to Texas. They moved to Arizona, other places. And because of this. Now, the federal government's trying to figure out if you moved to another state, do you have to pay the taxes, uh, federal taxes, in both states? So if you moved out of California to somewhere else, California's trying to say you have to pay your taxes for here, plus you have to pay your taxes in the other state for where you're living now. Some states have reciprocal agreements for states around them. Some states are just only whatever your wages are is what you're paying your taxes on. California is saying, well, if you left the state, we're trying to take some of that, too. And that's ridiculous. Well, I think that depends, though, because like if you worked in that state, like you're still going to have to pay taxes for what you worked in that state, even if you move. Right. That's what they're that's what they're doing. Yeah. So that what's wrong with that? Because they're still trying to say that you they're trying to tax you not only just for your work taxes, but that you still lived in the state during that time. So they're trying no, to but, charge no, you what fully I'm saying, for what I'm saying. Yeah, no. But what I'm saying is if they, they could still legally charge you on everything you worked up until you moved. Yeah, that I thought was normal. Yeah, that's normal. Like, I have a friend who moved to Georgia from New York, and, like, she's trying to do her taxes right now because it's a nightmare, and it has nothing to do with an, any kind of leaving town tax. It's because she worked half the year there and half the year in Georgia, and they have to figure out how to combine taxes. Look, uh, when you can later, look up the uh, the report that NBC News did about this. California is trying to, with everybody working wherever they move to, to live and everything, California is trying to put more into their tax <coughs> to take more of it, despite that you left. If you're still working from home was one thing, because that's another thing, too. I was saying they're trying to work um, uh, something to do with cable and Internet companies trying to uh, lobby for a tax on working from home is another thing. So if you're not going to an office anymore or whatever and you have to do all your stuff here, they're trying to tax you or add an additional tax to your internet service, to your cable provider, whatever, because you're working from home. And that's more than California. There's other states that were uh, either trying to fight that or trying to go with that. But that's becoming a thing now, too. So now you're going to like, well, we can't tax you from you know working in the office for doing this. Well, we'll tax you because you're working from home now for that. See, I'm reading complete. I think you completely misunderstood this, Eric, because I'm reading it, and they're saying if you moved out of the state, out of the, you, you can pay more taxes. It's nothing to do with COVID, but it's a wealth tax on if you're still have if you move residencies, but your biggest residency is still in California, that you have to pay taxes on that. Like you can't keep a mansion in California tax free, and then and then go to Kansas and have a smaller house. You know what I mean? And not pay taxes. No, no, this on is not house. this. This thing was not about keeping any kind of residency in california this was flat out leaving well no that's what they're saying but like people are leaving california saying they're not resident but still owning properties that's what that's, that's yeah, what that, the law that i'm reading all right that's that's something from different NBC than, news that's something different than i get that if you're still if you're saying i live somewhere else but you still have property there i get that this was people who are up and left they left california moved and got property somewhere else and then saying i don't live there anymore but California still saying, well, you were here in 2020, so you're still getting the full. Um, it's, it's like, yeah, I don't know. They were this saying is, so, they is, kept calling it like a penalty tax. 
I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up more because all the taxes that I'm seeing, everything is it's literally a wealth tax, and it's saying that like yes, if you left California in 2020, but you still own a gigantic property here that's bigger than stuff in your other yeah. property, you're gonna pay taxes on it. I'll, I'll but this look, is the only thing. Like I typed too. in, I, but I typed in COVID to it, and it brought up the same article. So like I don't know. I have to look into it. All right, I'll, I'll look but, for the clip too. I, think I mean, I'm not denying it, but like I, this is the first I've heard about it. I think it was either and the end of last of week or the beginning of this week on NBC uh, Nightly News. They were showing it. Yeah. We'll have um, to check it out. Like, <laughs> yeah. I would like to confirm that but before. The, the whole ending of the news story was that they were strongly advising everybody, um, e even if you're doing your taxes through QuickBooks or however you do it, to get an accountant if you were out of some, some of these states just to protect yourself because they said California has been pretty rampant as far as these penalties for leaving during this time. Yeah, I don't see any... Uh, covid leaving penalty all right i'll find the news thing and i'll, I'll post yeah, yeah, it find the article and send it to me because i like because you like you know me i'm a news junkie and i like right. to read all this stuff and this is literally the first i've ever heard of this so that's because i asked I'm, my dad about that's that why too. i'm very incredulous because i'm like i haven't heard any of this i asked my dad about that too and he's a he's, he said well i'm sure new york's doing the same thing he's like they're pretty uh with the exception of uh environmental stuff new york and california are pretty much on the same um government mindset the way they tax and spend with a lot of that shit i mean maybe but anyway yeah i don't know i can't i can't find anything about this so yeah all right send i'll, I'll send it over i want to I'm gonna look this up uh let's move on to some more pressing issues zia and her couch uh when zia moved to new jersey she had to deal with winter storms she had to deal with getting new furniture she had to deal with more winter storms <laughs> and then a couch that didn't work. So tell everybody fucking, why the couch didn't work. This motherfucking couch saga. So basically I'm boycotting the fuck out of Bob's discount furniture and I'm just telling everyone don't go there. It's not worth the fucking deals they are going to give you. And I looked into it further online now, which this it sucks because the first time we got it, we got a bed from them. No issues. Everything was fine. Um, Nick had gotten couches from them years ago. Everything was fine. I don't know what the fuck happened, but within this past like 2020 and 2021, I was looking at all the reviews and they're awful, like horrible reviews, consumer reports of just people being like, don't buy your stuff here. And I wish I had seen that before and known. So we go in to the place to get a couch because we move here and we don't have a couch. So we go in and we I fucking spend probably about 45 minutes, maybe even an hour sitting on all the couches to find the most comfortable one that, you know, you like, right? You're trying to find a comfortable couch. You don't want a fucking piece of shit couch. Right. So I find one and it's a sectional. So the chase connects to the couch part of it with these little clasps. They're like brackets that connect them because I and I made sure it had that because I knew it was going to be really annoying if the couches started fucking sliding apart from each other, which is exactly what happens. So I made sure to get that one. We get the couch. They bring it. The guy delivers it. And I'm like, whoa, wait a second. There's no brackets on this. He's like, yeah, this couch doesn't have brackets. I've been installing these all day. And I was like, what? And <laughs> he was like, I, but I, I, I made sure like that was one of the things that I made sure about the couch. <clears throat> right. So it doesn't have the brackets. And also the legs won't go on it. So it's super low to the ground and very weird looking in the place. So they, he goes, oh, it came with legs. But there was nothing to screw the legs into on the couch. Like it was missing that thing. So you can't connect the couch together and it doesn't have legs to stand on the on the floor. Exactly. It's a sectional couch? A sectional couch. Okay. Yeah. That, okay. Yep. So it's just sitting there and it's super low and we're looking at it and we're like, you know what? It's, it, it's defective as fuck. So we have to call. We immediately call the place and they're like, we'll replace it for you. And we're like, we're like you know what? We want to just get a different couch anyway, because this one, it's defective. You're going to have to replace it anyway. And we're just not, not, not happy with it. So we go in to pick out another couch, do the same thing. And mind you, this first couch, besides those issues, it felt soft and comfortable. It was memory foam, just like the couch that we sat on at the place. It felt exactly the same. We go in, we sit on a bunch more couches, we settle on another one. Same thing, has the clasps, has the fucking legs. It was just slightly smaller and like a darker gray. And we get that couch. So that couch shows up now a month later. So we for the first couch, we waited like three weeks, fine. This couch now, it's not gonna be available for a month. So that's now another month we don't have a couch. It's sitting half wrapped in the living room, just sitting in the middle of everything. And the new couch then comes a month later and half of it comes with legs and the other half doesn't. 
So you have the chase part has legs and the other half doesn't have legs. <laughs> so you, not only can you not connect them, but one is high and one is low. And so we fucking call back and they're like, oh, well, we can't replace. We don't have any legs to send you until April. So we're going to have to replace the whole section of the couch that doesn't that doesn't have the legs. So that's going to be another month. So I'm already getting so fucking annoyed with them. I would that's just say, I, fuck you. I want my money back from all this. Take I, this out of here and give me my money back. I should have at that point. That's exactly what I should have done. But no, I was like, just oh, fine, I guess. And then so we're sitting. So, of course, we're not really using the couch. And then I sit on the couch and I'm like, this is hard. And the one at the it's memory foam. And the one at the at the store is soft as fuck. The one that we got and it's not even like, oh, it needs to break in a little bit. I mean, it is fucking rock hard. My ass was going numb sitting on this couch. I'm sitting on it and I'm and like, this ouch. is horrible. <laughs> nice. nice I sat on it and I went, ouch, this couch. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, and I'm sitting, and it's just really like you sit on it. It's like, bonk, like that kind of hard, not even a little bit comfortable. And it's like two different couches. It's not like, oh, these ones are broken in a little bit more. The ones that you sit on, this was like you sink right in. It doesn't, it feels like memory foam. And the one we got just does it. It feels like shit. And so I call them back and I'm like, and but first we went to another store. We're like, let's make sure. So we went to two different Bob's furniture stores to try out the couches. And we're like, yeah, these feel like completely different couches. They're not even remotely the same. And it's not even like, oh, it needs to get broken in a little bit. Right. At this point, we've had this stupid shitty couch now for like almost a month. And it's supposed to be broken, like starting to break in. No, nope, it's not. It's so hard as fucking rock fucking like cement couch in there. So we call him back and we're like, hey, this couch is really uncomfortable. And really all I'm looking for here is like new couch cushions. Yeah. That's all I want. Just replace the cushions with actual comfortable cushions because these ones are horrible. They suck. Well, like and most places would do. They would try and work with you to like fix your Yeah, because they don't want to give exactly. you the money back. They will try to do anything they can a substitution to make you happy so that this goes away. Yeah. So and that I'm, it doesn't get told like this to the public and then people <laughs> like get really angry. Right. Oh, I'm not stopping here. I'm fucking don't, going don't, on social media. I'm going to keep the fire. going with this. Oh, you yeah. should be lowering them like fucking Temple of Doom. Just like they're like, oh, in the cage, just right into the fire. And then you bring up that cage empty. That's what you should be doing to Bob's. You're oh, going to die, do. Bob. <laughs> I'm like, going on social media. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to talk about this on as many shows as I can. Like, I don't give a fuck. I'm so fucking pissed at them. I talked about it on my stream and I'm yeah. going to keep getting it out there. But the way they, they treated us were so shitty. So the first guy goes, he goes, well, we have to send a technician out there to take a look at it. It's not going to be available for another like it was like two weeks or something like that right and i'm like jesus christ he'll, he'll they're like he'll know he'll know and i'm like because he was trying to tell me well it's worn in i'm like dude the difference between this and it's not like oh well this one's just a little bit it's so awful there's no give you sit like again you sit it's just like thunk you sit down on the thing he tells and so he's like well we have to have a technician go out there i'm like fine the technician comes out and he was like, so what's the issue? And I was like, it's just, it's really hard. It's super uncomfortable. It feels, it's definitely not memory foam. Technician like you feel this for like, furniture. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Technician, I'm, exactly. I'm sitting there, I'm like, that is the wrong word. That's what <laughs> they, they call like it. Best Buy Geek Squad. They're like, here you go. And they're like, yeah, we fix computers. We fix hard drives, not hard seats. Like, it's like we don't even <laughs> work for Bob's Furniture. You. And they called us to come out here and fix this. Yeah. <laughs> Fuckers. You're a geek. So they, you can fix anything. Yeah, right. They come in and they're like, um, where do I plug do I it do? in? It's a yeah. couch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you turn it off and turn it on? Gunshots. <laughs> Go ahead. So what happened? So he comes out and he and he and he's like, so what's the basically like, what's the issue? And I'm like, it's just really hard. And I was like, is there just any way they can replace the cushions? He's like, yeah, they can replace the cushions. He goes, yeah, that's we can we can do that. Let me call them. So he calls them from my phone. He's like, I need your phone to do it, which is what the last guy said too. So I guess that's their thing. They can't call from their phone. So they call and he's explaining the situation. And then in the middle of it, he just goes here. And I had to go back in and I had to do some work real quick. He hands the phone to Nick and then just leaves, just ducks. And the lady on the phone is like, yeah, there's nothing we can do. And Nick hands the phone to me at this point. So I'm like, excuse me. And she's like, it's been past three days. There's nothing we can do that has been in your home. And I was like, can I speak with your supervisor? And she was like, yeah, sure. So she passes me along to the supervisor. The supervisor. Was it Bob? If I fucking wish I'd give that piece of shit in your fault. <laughs> the fucking supervisor is this fucking cunty woman, too. Like You could tell she wasn't even trying to be nice or helpful. Super cunty. I forget her name. I wish I could remember. I should have written it down. 
Anyway, this bitch fucking comes in and she she comes in and she's like, yeah, there's nothing we can do. You've had it for three days already in your home. And it says that right on the back of the of the of the, because you've been waiting for them to fix all of yeah, this. No yeah, no shit. She says it right. She's like, it's right on the back of your receipt. And I was like, I just want the couch cushions replaced. And she was like, no, we can't do that. I was like, well, then I want my money back. I don't want this couch anymore. I'm going somewhere else. She's like, no, we can't do that either. Straight up. We're just like, nope, go fuck yourself. I no. hate Bob's soap. They can suck a giant cock. And I'm well, telling this everywhere, everywhere. Well, have you tried just like, you know, going directly to your credit card company and be like, hey, I bought this. Uh, we have I have serious issues. They're refusing to fix it. They never gave me my my completed product within the time frame that I had. And now they're saying I can't return it. Can I can you do anything about this? They can so put a it's a box on. Generally, they will hard. From Wells but Fargo. Yeah, but Wells Fargo is still the bank. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter that Bob's is the name on the card. The bank is still the credit card company. You think I could actually, because I thought 100%. I wanted to do that. Thing. Yeah. 100%. Like, you have to try. Like, yeah. it's the most Lay you can it all do. out for them. Show them the receipts, everything. Um, uh, show, show them uh, if they need proof. Take screenshots of, like, call logs uh, to them. Everything saying, hey, look, this has been ongoing. It shows up with the wrong pieces, the wrong parts of the couch. These cushions are, are um, you know, are malfunction whatever you want to call them. they're 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 bad uh yeah they're not cushions they're malfunctioning <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's <laughs> like i have a flintstones couch and uh that you say this has been a traumatic experience the entire time during covid having this person here who barely did anything handed me a phone and then walked out mm -hmm. lay yeah. it all out to the bank and say i want to stop payment on all of this until they get their shit done because if you cut off their money they need to go and and 100 percent, and they'll come and fix this or they'll take I, it back and, and make a make a settlement with you and just like here's your money back and then go to some uh some other place that's yeah, like, at, i'm gonna try that I yeah am. You, like what you do is you and you and you make it public too like you tweet at them be like yo i did this this isn't happening i'm calling out my credit card company you tag your fucking credit card you just like bring everything out just we'll, like, we'll isolate this and we'll put it up online and then tag let's do it tag bob's people and then you can send them the link to this and go hey we just spoke about it on national radio here and uh and we'll, what are you gonna the, do about edit it edit out the part where we just said that so they don't know it on the air so we'll edit that out so no one just heard that right heard no, it. no one heard, exactly. no one heard any it's of all that in the part. video exactly here. they all heard all of this <laughs> but yeah so that's yeah, my that's program. my fucking debacle with bob and just their their level of customer service was so fucking awful when all i wanted was them to try to fix the couch cushions right. that's it i wasn't even asking for a refund at that point but then i was so pissed no, at it the was end. to give me to give you what you initially uh were told you were purchasing and then when that wasn't right to fix this and then that mm -hmm. wasn't right. And then the cushions mm -hmm. were were essentially rocks with a slip cover, and yeah. that and that's not work right. And they're saying, "Oh, it's too bad. It's been uh, in your house three days." That works where if you got the couch, you enjoyed it, you tip the delivery guy, and you're there for three days. You know, f by the fifth day, you're like, "I don't really like this couch." That's to prevent that because that's a health issue. Yeah, this is a bigger health issue that transcends that because you're in a pandemic. That you mm -hmm. had people in your house, you had this going on, and it's all wrong, and they're refusing to do anything about it. Yep, refusing to do anything. Oh, and also, the dude that showed up for the fucking thing had his mask off and only put it on when he got up into our place. When what I couldn't let name? him in, he had his mask off. What was his name? I don't, I don't know. Bob. He didn't tell me. Bob Everyone's Jr. name is Bob at this place. They're Everyone just all up. Bob. You should refer to every single person there as Bob. Like every yeah. time she's like, hi, I'm Jim. All right, all right, Bob, fix my couch. <laughs> you talk to that lady again. I want Bob on the phone. Yeah, well, you see, nope, phone. get Bob on the phone. Give me your supervisor. Get Bob the supervisor to get Bob the owner on here and I'm fix gonna, my I'm couch. I'm going to need all the Bob. Bobs. Yeah. I'm going to need yeah, every, the every motherfucking Bob. But yeah, I'm not, letting, I'm not letting this go. I'm so furious at the way they handled that. And I had just gotten on my stream, I had just talked about how best buy gave us like the best customer service experience before like right before that and i was like nice that's how you do it compared to how fucking bobs does it where she goes we stand behind our technicians i was like your technician said that we could get new couch cushions and she's like it's he not said an electronic it's not an automobile it's not some sort of machinery it's a well, couch. Fucking couch they're not technicians they're handymen at best 
actual assholes. Well, I love that was like it's slowly becoming like Fight Club for you, and they're like, <laughs> his name was Bob's Furniture, and it's like everyone's sitting around your couch, just like his name know, was Bobbert in. Paulson. Yeah, <laughs> the first rule of Bob's Furniture Club is if you bought something, you have to return it. Like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> first rule of Bob's Furniture is you don't return Bob's furniture. Yeah, you don't. You don't. <laughs> Second yeah, they, rule they don't is let you. if you try and return Bob's Third Bob rule, furniture, you, you have hang to up. fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what it's turning into. It's turning into a fucking well, a fight club against right, Bob. So we'll like, is this on memory there. phone or is this like temper pedic? Like, <laughs> like temper. it turns into the whole. It's like the rage chest in our game. If you don't water it down, it explodes into fire. Yeah, it just bursts into flames. Everyone within ten feet dies. And yeah, she comes back to normal. Like that uh, is a we temper pedic mattress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good ability to have. All right, we're gonna put this like clip up ability. online. If you're watching, uh, if you're listening to the radio show, Retweet if you're watching the show, fuckers, or if you're watching. If you clip. have a Bob story to share with us, if Bob's fucked you over, please let us know. 651 yes. Smithers, 651 764 8437. But until that point, if you can help out Zia here, if you know a way around this, how to help, uh, maybe you have other furniture you want to send her, not used furniture, but maybe she wants one of those giant oversized beanbag chairs in order to replace her couch for the moment where she falls in and then gets sucked in like some sort of pastry where she's like the filling of a donut, you know, any of those kind of things hit us up here. Let us know and uh, see if we can help Zia out with all of this. I'm just picturing okay. like the rescue mission of her just stuck in the beanbag chair. Help me someone out. Just, like, Help someone me like out. steps on it from the other side, she's just flying across the room. <laughs> you walk in, Nick's like, "Where are you?" And she just sees—he just sees at the very top. There's hands and feet just going like this. <laughs> yeah, like oh she's no, bent in there. The couch ate her, and now it's I'm gonna just, eat me. She's in I'm that. Just picturing myself as doll size now. Yeah, yeah, she's in that beanbag chair like the contortionist guy in Ocean's Eleven when he had to fold in half and slide yeah. down into the tube where they yeah, yeah put him into the vault room. That's what she is, but except it's just a giant beanbag chair there we go bob's beanbag chairs bob's beanbag bob. chairs that'd be hilarious filled, filled, filled with sand that'd be hilarious bob, if somebody boring. sent zia a bob's beanbag chair <laughs> what's it filled with boulders it's just one boulder wrapped in a tarp no like, here you go it's filled. i fucking hate it so much because on the tag it was like made from tempur for your or bob repedic or whatever it is for for your comfort and i'm just like what the fuck is this right bob get out of here bob isn't soft those beanbags are oh. filled with the grind up remains of all the other couches that they had to uh, have returned and couldn't yeah. hold it because they were That's broken. What doing. It's like I'm not the first Bob. <laughs> it's like again, get a giant bag, put all that in there. We'll color it pink, blue, red, put them out on the show floor. Yeah, Bob's beanbag chairs. Remember those Bob's commercials? They would like dress themselves up as couches and just like run into each other on TV. Like they could have killed each other now knowing how hard those cushions actually are. Like mm-hmm. I didn't realize the stuntmen that had to have been involved in those Bob's commercials. Yeah. And Bob's easily identifiable. He's got like this beard. He kind of looks like Walter Ray Williams Jr., the old bowler. Like you can see him. If you saw him coming down the street, you'd be like, that's fucking Bob. And then you'd <laughs> be like, yo, fix my couch, motherfucker. <laughs> Just a whole horde of people chasing him. There he is. <laughs> that's Bob. Angry mob from The Simpsons with torches. Yeah, it's Being the Bob. Like everyone's yelling to fix a different thing. Fix my couch. Fix my bed. Fix my dresser. Paint my fence. Fix this economy. He has nothing to do with that. Still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to fix it. Fix everything. It's like the purge, but it's all about Bob. <laughs> yeah. What about Bob? Purge edition. Ooh, like that sounds great. Combining two like movies it. you never thought should be mixed together, but here we are. Um, We're going to take a... Well, we got a couple quick things to talk about before we take a break. Uh, one, um, going into the fast food thing, Gittle showed me a tweet from Wendy's today which I thought was pretty funny, uh, taking shots of people. It said, uh, uh, you can't be a lonely middle-aged man in his basement if you have 200 plastic toys of the things that make you remember what at least your parents loved you still. Did I screw that up? I did. Uh, You're just saying words. Did you have a stroke, Eric? I, yeah, it all blend together. You can't be a lonely middle-aged man in his basement if you have 200 plastic toys of the things that make you remember when at least your parents loved you still mint in box. So there's no punctuation. So that's why this was Yo, it's little, Wendy's. They're yeah. Angry and it says National Roast Day. So they were taking shots at Funko. And then it also said, P.S. Please make a Funko Wendy. Well, yeah. Did you click the full tweet? So if you click the full tweet, it goes to Wendy's and they're saying, hey, we're going to roast anyone today. And then Funko said, hey, roast us. And that was the roast of Funko. Yeah. <laughs> 
So but also, ma- like, people would probably buy a Wendy's. That's pretty good. It. Well, yeah. They'd probably I, buy a Grimace, I, the yeah. McDonald's. I got the whole McDonald's like, set over there. Oh, see, there they you were going to have it. And there I you go. It. I should have known before I said I have, that. yeah, there's a, the consumer has a lot of uh, Funko food things over there. Uh, but yeah, if, I'm sure they'll come out with a Wendy's edition now that'll be exclusive to only buy in their stores in West Hollywood and up in fucking Seattle. Which drives me nuts because they put out some things like, oh, it's available on our website. You go to the website. Oh, it's sold out. You just said it was on the website. How is it sold out? See, would you want a Wendy's head? You know what I would want if I had to get a a Wendy's uh, Funko thing? I would want an actual like usable Wendy's like Funko cup that I could put a frosty in that would stay cold. Like that's what I want. I don't want a stupid bobblehead. Like I want a usable thermal Wendy's milkshake. Milk. I want that Wendy's means- head on top of the cup and one of her pigtails is curled up and that's the straw where you just drink See? the, the uh, liquid through her pigtail through her head. And her eyes spin as the liquid's going through like, like so it's coming out the other side. Yeah. It's very sadistic. to try a Wendy's burg. I've had their chicken sandwich now which was fucking awesome. Wendy's spicy is pretty chicken good. Sandwich. It, it was really good. It's not Do bad. you not have Wendy's on West Coast or... Um- no, they did have them over there. I just had never gone. There's actually we have one in Hawaii too. It's in Kona, it's in Kona, but I just never went there. I don't know. Right, okay. It was just one of those places. Yeah, I just never went to. Wendy's is and definitely then, better than most of your lower tier fast food places. It's, their burgers it's, are pretty good, and their their uh, even, uh, their look, chicken products are good. Their chicken the products chicken, not the crispy bad. Chicken, yeah. The spicy chicken sandwich. I'm sorry. Spicy was chicken sandwich. Bomb. It's it's okay. There's places with better spicy chicken sandwiches. For fast food. Mm. Yeah. Yum. Well, yeah. Popeyes is that one. was that was like the number one for a while. Like you, if you got a, like a spicy chicken sandwich, it was always go to Wendy's because like, the McDonald's, McDonald's one was, was half assed. Yeah. Like yeah. they had the their spicy was like that that patty thing. It was they like have their spicy chicken too. nuggets yeah. now. Uh, they're back again at, at McDonald's and they're not good. Like their regular chicken nuggets are better than their spicy chicken nuggets. Wendy's yeah, used I, to I have both. By the, yeah, I walked by the McDonald's today and it had the thing. It just said uh, spicy nugs are back, back by spicy demand. I said, yeah, because it wasn't popular demand. Like they clearly, like, <laughs> no, it wasn't. nobody wanted them. Like the spice was like, yeah, we want to be used. Was, and like, everyone was excited demand. because everyone for fast food, a lot of people, you know, like they like Wendy's chicken nuggets. But the main staple for fast food chicken nuggets was always McDonald's. And then mm-hmm. they're like, oh, now they're finally doing the spicy because Wendy's did the regular and the spicy. Burger King does ten for a dollar for the spicy nuggets. Which what does that tell you? I mean, fast food that prices alone. Good. If you're getting ten for a dollar, like these are not good, and they're this not is some good grade B pigeon meat. Like what is this? <laughs> Malt pigeon meat. Oh Malk. no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Wendy's, um, uh, yeah, has good chicken products. Uh, their spicy chicken sandwich. It's not bad. It's it's okay. I like their Asiago Ranch uh, chicken. Sandwich. Whoa, is pretty good. Is I would try that. Fancy. It is. Fancy Asiago. It is. It's Asiago Holy. cheese. It's bacon. It's some ranch dressing on there. And I get the I grilled chicken that. one. The grilled chicken one's really good. Um, but if you want a good spicy chicken sandwich, there's some other places that uh, that do a little better. Like the we were talking about the Popeyes chicken sandwiches are really good. I'll have to go there. I think right. it's, I still think it's good. A friend of mine told me that he heard that they're still not that good, and I was like, dude, I had one two weeks ago. It's still great. Oh, I've had them. Yeah, they were yeah. They're fantastic. But I need um, to try their new sandwich. They have a uh, a fish sandwich now that just dropped today. Yeah, you were. I didn't see, and that's weird because usually I see that stuff. I didn't see anything about the fish sandwich. I guess yeah, that didn't blow up like the chicken sandwich wars did. Well, no, they're wars. they're trying to. It's it's uh the article just came out. It's called the uh, the Cajun fried flounder uh, sandwich. Huh. And the person who did the review was like, "Yo, this shit is actually really good." And it's like the same batter, the same crispiness. It's just fish instead of chicken. Right. When was the last? Last time you had a fillet of fish uh the last time i had a fillet of fish i was a kid and i didn't re- i mean i think i liked it as a kid but i grew up in a family of fishermen so uh like anything that wasn't fresh caught was just garbage like oh this is yeah. garbage don't eat that this is garbage fish i can catch something better so like i never really had a lot of fish out at places and we never went to a lot of seafood restaurants either because my dad would be like, I'm just going to cook the fish I caught. Like, we're not going to go out for seafood if I could just go catch this for free. Right. So, like, we didn't really go out. Like, occasionally we would go to, like, the Clam and Oyster Bar in East Islip, which was decent. But other than that, like, the fish sandwich thing, uh, I didn't really pick up on it until, like, it all went viral when everyone was, like, doing the filet of fish, like, for uh, for. Easter Sunday or whatever it is, or like Lent or whatever. That was it is. a thing. 
Why? Oh, yeah, like they were like advertising it. It would be like, oh, it's coming up. Get the fillet of fish because, because you know, you uh, fish. leading into Easter, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, you weren't eating meat. You were eating, uh, you were eating fish as part of like oh, certain like, okay. as part of Catholicism yeah. and and Christianity and and uh, yeah, they had that whole thing leading into where you weren't eating meat. And uh, this goes to show how much I know about religion. It, it means nothing now, but. Yeah, it, was, it was a mark. I mean, what does it say when a uh, a fillet of fish is being used as a marketing gimmick because of a religious tradition? You know, <coughs> I yeah, never and had that being one. said, it's it's not that great. It's like minced fish. I've never I was gonna had say, one. You've never had one. I was going to say I remember having it when I was younger and like it. Like it's been years since I've had one. I liked. I remember liking it. But I also remember the filet of fish was like an old person thing. I don't yeah. know if this was just Hawaii or if it was everywhere no, else, but like that's what old people got. You're right. There were there were plenty of old people, especially on Saturdays, where they'd come in mid morning. They would right when the breakfast when I worked at McDonald's in high school, they have the breakfast change over like ten in the morning, and then yeah. yeah. So the uh, older men, if they weren't there in the morning to get their cup of coffee, that they would just constantly. I didn't even charge the old people if they were there all morning, and it's like it's supposed to be like twenty five cents a cup. I was just like, give me the thing. I don't care they're fine they, they just need some place to hang yeah, out they were they're, hanging, not causing, they're not causing trouble on the streets and, just it, and there were always fine. regulars too you saw the same yeah. set of guys that would come in they would get their breakfast sandwich or whatever and their coffee and they'd sit there but the ones that would come in for the they would get a cup of coffee and the filet of fish sandwich and it's just one. so funny coffee and filet of fish in the morning at like 10 a.m what a yeah. weird horrible combo oh well, by God. then it's midday for them they've been up since four or five in the morning so i guess you're right that's 10 a.m for them is lunch and then dinner that makes sense because they have dinner at 30 early bird early special birds, at 3 right? 30 <laughs> and i always wanted to try them i was not i'm not a seafood person so i never eat any of this stuff when i was a little kid i used to eat fish sticks and then for some reason it just clicked in my head that i didn't like fish anymore fish no, sticks and custard i'd eat close fish sticks uh, i used to eat uh manhattan clam chowder all the time i used to have all the stuff and all of a sudden the seafood just turned off in me as like i never touched any of the stuff again uh but it looks like a hash brown or uh like a potato um what do they call them box sets or, or whatever in irish stuff but uh, whatever the, the latkes what's latkes. the potato what's pancakes the what the potato pancake? The, like that, it, the, that's the like Jewish. The is like the Jewish ones, right? The Irish ones are called boxets or boxies or something. Oh, I don't know. Um, really but they're it. they're just like a hash brown. They the the filet fish looks like a hash brown with a piece of it cheese does. and some tartar sauce on it, and that's it. It's called and boxies. Boxies, yeah. B o x t y. And boxies. <clears throat> yeah, it looks I'm, just like a regular pancake, but it's potato. Yeah, I just, I had never wanted to try the filet fish ever. I'm not a fish person. But well, I can tell you don't look like a fish person under the water. The fish don't stink. You're good at catching the fish and sea of thieves, though. Right. But the yeah, I, don't uh, I don't know if I'll try the Popeye's fish sandwich. I'm not a uh, person who enjoys all that. I like the when the, remember when Arthur Treacher's were around or Treacher's. Oh, yeah. What the hell is that? Was a it was a fast food seafood place that you know started off on its own and then wound up becoming one of four things combined together with Nathan's or whatever in a mall, like Long yeah. John Silver's. Oh. It was I mean it was the equivalent of like a Long John Silver's. <laughs> yeah. like if you think like Arthur Treacher's was basically a Long John Silver's, like I've the way Burger King and McDonald's are yeah, sort of the same no thing. Need to. Um, it's a fish seafood restaurant. Fish everything's all fried food. in the same basket and then dumped on your plate. What's the lobster seafood restaurant? Red Lobster. Red Lobster. Red Lobster. I've been to one of those once for some reason. So weird. I went with my stepmom to get her eye surgery done. We had to go to Oahu because they don't have anything like that on the Big Island. Right. So we flew to, and I went with her because she wouldn't see. She couldn't see. And I think I was of driving age. I had my. Up, is that how you end up in a Red Lobster because she couldn't see? <laughs> I feel like pretty much, but no, this was before she got her eye surgery. We were on Oahu on the, on in Hawaii where there's like mad good, good seafood everywhere. And my stepmom was like, how about red lobster? And I think I was like 16 at the time. And I was like, sure. And we got a lobster pizza and it was not like awful, I guess, but not good. I don't know why the fuck we ended up no. at a Red Lobster in Hawaii. Like, that makes no yeah, sense. Red Lobster, look, you don't want to go to a Red Lobster at all. But no. you don't want to go to a Red Lobster if you're on any kind of coastal or island area that's known for having good seafood. You don't want to it's eat like going, there either. 
It's like going to the Sparrow in Times Square. Like, why are we going to go to Sparrow when there's good fucking pizza? Like, anywhere. Like, I would rather go to the 99 cent pizza place where it's like a garbage slice of pizza than go to Sparrow. Like, you know what I mean? At least it's going to be made. But, like, why Red Lobster in Hawaii? Like, oh, no. God, no. I would want to burn it from space. Like, I would want to be there and be like, I want dolphin fish and I want, like, good (laughs) shit. I want, like, lobster. I want crab. Mahi, mahi, fucking all the good stuff. And Gittles, my family is like your family. Like, I grew up uh, by the time I was seven I was out in the ocean at night with a three prong catching fish yeah. with my uncle and then you take them in she and killed have fish, fish for with dinner. a trident you might mm-hmm. want to lay low for a little while I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah Bob do you hear that <laughs> yeah Bob <laughs> But but so it's the same sort of thing where you yeah. get so spoiled having like all this really good and we wouldn't like not go out to get seafood because you can still get good seafood out. But you just get so spoiled getting seafood that you caught 10 minutes ago and right. you're then, you know, scaling it and gotten having that fish. And it's it's and, and then a red lobster. I'm just like, I don't. yeah, it's like <laughs> red lobster. Well, I went once horrible. I went once because I've never been there. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it and see what it's all about. And. I got the scampi and it was just a salt lick. It was yeah. so overly salted and everyone kept saying, oh, their cheddar biscuits are the best. I didn't really give a shit about the biscuits. They were okay. I don't think they're as great as everybody says that they they're are. They're very greasy. Like they're greasy and salty, but like I don't think yeah. the flavor is that good. I think the flavor is just fried bread, no. which just tastes good. And but anyone like, who keeps saying like, that you got to go there for the biscuits, guess what? They sell the fucking mix in your supermarket now. You can make your own red lobster cheddar biscuits and then avoid that restaurant completely. Uh, yeah. yeah, it just wasn't good at all. It just, anytime anytime food is too salty, you know they're trying to cover up the fact that it has no flavor by putting a bunch of fucking salt on it. Right. <laughs> or they're covering up their inferior ingredients that they're yeah. using that like that they that they need in there, but they don't want to pay the full price for real shit, you know? Exactly. <clears throat> the yep. one highlight from going to that red lobster was the person at the table next to me. I was excited. Tretch from Naughty by Nature. Oh, was, oh, that's pretty cool. He was sitting there eating. I go, that's fucking trash from Naughty by Nature. I was like, that's really cool. <laughs> How random. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Red Lobster sucks. Uh, the the Popeye's fish, uh, Gittles, if you're going to go try it, maybe you can. You want to do a, a, you know, a <laughs> guest review for the consumer and tell everybody about it. Well, I almost did it today. And the reason why I almost did it today is because as I found out about it today, uh, I was on the website and it also just said, you can buy sandwich insurance. And I said, ooh, I could buy sandwich insurance. This is something new. Like usually insurance, like, you know, is good for a car. Uh, it's good for your house. It's bad in a casino, but this is also a gamble. So I had to like, you know, really think about it. And so um, on their website that says, if you download the Popeyes app, you can pay 10 cents for sandwich insurance. And the sandwich insurance is if you like the, the fish sandwich or if you don't like the fish sandwich, you can use your insurance and they will give you a chicken sandwich. So basically, if you download the app for 10 cents, you get a uh, chicken sandwich with your fish sandwich. Oh, Wait, that's so funny. if you do like the sandwich, you can still hand it in. It's usually they do that to say, look, there's this insurance. We're so confident that you'll like our, our fish sandwich that if you don't like it, we'll give you your money back or we'll give you another sandwich. They're trying to get you. people to just try it. <laughs> no, they're going to get people to exploit this. So you're going to get people who are either don't have enough money or even do and they're just, you know, want to... Uh, builds this company they're going to get a chicken sandwich pay the uh, the fish sandwich pay the extra 10 cents and then get a five dollar chicken sandwich along with that yes yeah, <laughs> so here's the thing if you go to not, i'm not making this up it's sandwichinsurance.com. it is the popeyes <laughs> sandwich insurance website they bought and the there's, dot a, com. there's a report there is a report claim it just says so you tried our cajun flounder sandwich maybe even finished the whole thing but you didn't love it as much as the chicken sandwich right with a bunch of eyes well if you got sandwich insurance for an extra 15 cents we'll give you a free chicken sandwich there you go do oh, not so submit a claim cents? unless you place the, the cajun flounder sandwich order via the app so you have to order it through the app that's the catch but hey 10 cents why don't they just do buy one fish sandwich get a chicken sandwich for 15 cents yeah because they want they want you to they're they, they want you to make you out, feel right? like that you gambled and that like you that you're you're participating in this in a way. But you, know you didn't what I mean? gamble like, because their their thing is open. If you liked it or you didn't, you can still go and get the chicken sandwich. 
This is supposed I to be, mean, we're so confident that you'll love just, our new fish sandwich that for 15 cents extra on here, that if you didn't, you can go get another, uh, we'll give you a chicken sandwich. This is just opening everybody to pay an extra 15 cents and get a chicken sandwich. Fuck yeah, dude. Like, I, I <laughs> wanted to do that shit today. Like, I was 100% like, God damn, for 15 cents, I can get one of those chicken sandwiches. Like, they're worth $4. They're clearly worth 15 cents. Like, like that's a great deal. And then you also get the fish sandwich for the story. And whether it's good or not, you still have a delicious chicken sandwich afterwards. Yeah. And then what you can do is you could also be like, yo, I said I hated this, but I didn't actually hate it. And then you take the chicken sandwich, you put it on top of the fish sandwich, and then you put the bun on top of that. And then you have the the Cajun fish fish, fish chick witch thing or something like that. Fish chick witch. Thick witch. The fish, the, yeah. Thick the, witch. the fish fish witch. The flounder chicken. What's a, a chowder? Fish it. What is, Chow- Fishing. It, it's fishing. It's just chick, chicken fishing. and chicken and it's fishing. Gone fishing. Yeah. <laughs> Ficken. Perfect. Sorry. But yeah, yes. I would eat that. I want to try it. So I might, if I go tomorrow and they still have sandwich insurance, then I'm going to go for it. I'm going to see how long the sandwich insurance lasts. And I have to see if I qualify. Like, I don't qualify for life insurance because I don't make any money, but I'm per- fairly certain how I great, qualify for sandwich insurance. How great insurance. is it that Giddles will qualify for the vaccine, but not for the sandwich insurance? I mean, honestly, I would ra- I would rather you know qualify for the vaccine than the. Sandwich I understand, insurance, but, the, but chances are we I'm don't live in that kind of world, Giddles. It's like, well, he he got the vaccine for the global pandemic, but he could, didn't qualify for liking the chick sandwich and then uh, the fish sandwich and getting the the sandwich insurance. Oh wait, there's a terms of agreements here. Hold on. There's always a terms and agreements, and no one ever reads it. We'll own oh your God, bank account. A lot of, wow, wow! Popeyes has a lot of things going on. If it says, <laughs> if you click on, if you click on terms and conditions, it says other offers. Oh, so sandwich insurance goes till today. Oh, they have a Mardi Gras special coming up. You get a three piece beignet free with a five dollar minimum purchase. Uh, okay. That's good not to know. A beignet. Not, not valid in Hawaii. Sorry. Oh. And then there's oh, wait, T-Mobile tu- T-Mobile Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, you can get a free chicken sandwich with a $5 order if you have a T-Mobile. Like, I should be shopping at Popeye's for everything. <laughs> wow. Where is their health insurance? How big are the beignets? I don't know. I don't think we can... Uh, are they individually wrapped, or do they cut it right in front of you? And like- it says, get three-piece beignets for free with minimum $5 purchase when you visit the restaurant and wish crew members happy Mardi Gras. Valid for drive through carry-out, or dine-in at participating restaurants only on the 15th. So that's a week from... That's, that's this Monday. coming Monday. Yeah, it's Monday. It's President's Day. Yeah. yeah. Guys, go. go get free beignets on Monday. Yeah, you just had to say, hey, happy Mardi Gras. Why don't don't you pull go down get your mask beignets. and scream it in their face, though. Yeah. Keep your mask Yeah, keep your mask on. Zia, why don't yeah. you go get free beignets on Monday? I want to get free, but it's Monday. I don't eat junk food on Mondays. Yeah, you, buy it, no. you buy it, you put it in the fridge, and then you have it the next day. I don't eat junk food on weekdays. <laughs> but you do a, uh, your snack streams on Sunday. Sunday, exactly. You open up your fridge and you go, beignet. I Damn, have day late. <laughs> day late, a beignet short. Oh, well. Yeah, All I right. use it like when my arms are sore. I use beignet, and uh, I eat them, and then my arms aren't sore anymore because I'm not doing any work. All right, oh, we're gonna take. I thought a you break. were talking about Ben Gay, and I was like, oh yeah, Ben. Why is he so happy? Oh, Ben Gay, because he found Bob. All right, we're gonna take a break. I know she's mad. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna go through uh, TV and, and movie updates for you. And I got to tell you why I'm even more annoyed at Zack Snyder. For oh yeah, the Justice Piece League. Of garbage. She's a garbage hate, indeed. Hate we'll it. take a break. We'll be right back. More. It's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. Next. I want to requiem for my disease, so I'm paging Doctor Steve. Doctor Steve. Hey, it's your old pal, Doctor Steve. Join me and my band of medical misfits. After you're done listening to this episode of It's Eric Nagel, come on over to get your fix of all things moist and hideous on Weird Medicine. We're the first and still only uncensored medical show in the history of broadcast radio, now a podcast. We're an uncensored medical show for people who had never listened to a namby-pamby doctor droning on and on about cholesterol. We'll discuss anything from jock itch to vaginitis, from hair loss to toe fungus. Check out episodes of Weird Medicine. Subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you get your podcasts. And like we always say, it's Eric Nagel. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, and Facebook at It's Eric Nagel. 
Hey, this is Sal Volcano. This is Brian Quinn. And it's Murr, and you are listening to It's Eric Nagel. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to segment two of the program. Eric Zia's got a mouthful of spaghetti. Gittles does not have a mouthful of spaghetti, but he wishes I wish he I did. I'm hungry. Yes. Someone throw spaghetti in my mouth. <laughs> Please. I don't want to stab. Oh. <laughs> It's not working. Hold no. on. Eat no. this, chip. this is like this is like spaghetti, right? This is a gigantic sort. Yes. There you go. Zia just fed Gittles. Uh, for those oh, of you not you. watching the video portion of the that's program be on here. Only blondes later. Right. Only blondes. Yeah. That's... It's just going to be me and Gittles making and eating food. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh you're dirty. The only flans oh, graphic is done. Got? We got to oh, put the. We're gonna put the shirts out. Up. We're gonna put the shirts out. Only flans and uh, you know for Gittles' uh, number of the feast show coming very very soon. You're like, oh, you're so naughty. It's the yeast of my problems, baby. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. You better believe it. Ah. Whoa. <laughs> now we're into only puns. So. No, get out, Eric. <laughs> Uh, before we get into TV and movies, which we do on segment two, uh, just a quick video game news update for you. So, if you've been looking for PlayStation 5 or the brand new Xbox since uh, the holiday season, and they were like, oh, there's going to be more coming in, in the new year, you thought, all right, well, I couldn't get one during the holidays, or too many people were buying them and price gouging people, flipping them for, uh, you know, ridiculous prices. I'll wait until the next year and then buy them when they're back in store, like you normally would. Well, they haven't been back in stores and as our friend Matt OG has been trying to get a PS5 and been finding that people are just buying them out as soon as they hit a website or something they're completely sold out and then they're selling for like a thousand dollars online fucking assholes people stop buying those right stop fucking buying them because if they can't sell them they'll stop doing it but that stop never happens buying that's them. the problem I know, it's concert so tickets and you know the, the, whatever used to be the hot toy leading into the holidays people would buy all that shit and then try to sell them on ebay for money Shitheads. Um, now the reason why this delay is because there is a worldwide shortage on the chips that they need for the chip settings for uh, exactly for the PS5 and for the Xbox. So without the chip manufacturing, what's that? That they can't get all these things out there. And it's saying about six more months, which is fucking ridiculous. So as, as they're getting them made, they're just cranking them out piecemeal. Essentially, it's like, hey, we got 200 done. Send them out to this place. We got 40 done. Send them out to this place. Like it, it's ridiculous, right? Wow. So. <clears throat> Because people are using that bot technology like they use for the problems like Gittles and I have during like uh, New York or San Diego Comic-Con, any kind of exclusive from Funko or Kid Robot or any of these, any kind of stuff that's coming out as an exclusive. You got to log in at this time and get in a waiting room and hopefully you can get, you know, a ticket, you can get a product, you can get all this stuff. These people have these bots that just somehow get in in front of everybody and buy everything up. Yep. So the UK is leading this charge where they're uh, initiating some uh, policy that's going to ban bots and scalping online. I don't know how they pull this off, but they're they're going ahead to doing this because there's such outrage over there, over in, in the UK and over in Europe that they can't even get PS5. Like it's a shortage here and it's a shortage in Asia. But when, shortage everywhere. when the things come out, it goes Asia first, you know, and then the United States second then Europe usually is always delayed. They're usually a month to two months behind everybody else before these things get released. They haven't gotten anything, like barely anything over there. So they've been really screaming about this whole thing. So they're putting some legislation together that it's going to now ban and make this illegal for the bot scalpers if they track you down. Like there's, It's not even like a penalty. Like There's jail time they're looking to put in for all of this Good. stuff. Yeah, good, good. People are like scalping too much shit nowadays. There's shortages. Like the superconductor shortage right now is just fucking insane. Yeah. Like I've been trying to help Matt OG build a computer, and uh, like no joke, since November prices have at least five gone up five or six, <clears throat> like hundred percent. Like it's just absolutely nuts. Like yeah, the video card that's in mine and Eric's computer that we both built two years ago that was already a one year old card we bought for one hundred and seventy nine dollars each, and you can't get it for under six hundred dollars used now. Like yeah. that's oh how big, that's how big the demand is. Like it's absolutely insane. It is not the right time 
to be buying any kind of computer or electronics right now, unfortunately. And like, and the thing that sucks, like you're saying, is because AMD and like, you know, they've been making a lot of these components for both the PS5 and the Xbox. So there's just so much delay and just so much yeah. stuff happening. <clears throat> and because of, you know, people not being able to like, because of worker shortages, because of the pandemic, like it's just going to get can't compounded. Meet the demand. And, like, yeah. And like, unfortunately, with the uh, computer and tech market, stuff like this happens. Like, you know, every couple of years, like you'll have um, uh, like something like this happens where there's just shortages and it's just not a good time to build or buy. And then you have other years where like you can't get things cheaper. Like the computer I built, like I said, I built this whole computer for like seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. And, like and it's it's super cheap and it's extremely powerful. Like, I mean, I can stream my show from the kitchen on it and I can do everything. My internet is another story. Uh but <laughs> like I can control that. But you know, like to build this computer now would literally cost me almost double for no no changes like the same parts and yeah. that's what's crazy we so. priced out a computer because we're i you know people have been donating and all all of my donations on twitch right now are getting saved for a new computer fund and we originally set a goal for four thousand to get a very super powerful computer because the computer i have now we built it probably about two years ago too it has a 1080 but I can't stream certain games. I can't stream Warzone. I can't stream, um, what's the, oh, I have Cyberpunk. I couldn't stream that. The, I would say if your computer's like two years old, you can probably find ways to upgrade it. Like, so, I would, like two years is within the range where like you should still be pretty good on stuff. Like I had a friend and he was going to buy a new computer and I told him to just switch to an M2 hard drive, which is just a faster solid state. And he's like, I, it's like I have a brand new computer. So I'll everything say hard loads drive in like five seconds would help, I think, for sure. But it's an i7 and we I want an i9. I would like at least a 20, well, a 30, 30 a 3080 really. Like I, I like really want to upgrade it because streaming is what I do. And that's like, you know, what I'm trying to make my career. So I can't like half ass it with a shitty computer. So, and not that this is a shitty computer, this is a good, but it just, there's a lot of stuff that it struggles with. So it would be, so we set that aside and Nick did a build of a computer for like basically top tier everything. And it was $6,000 right now. And we yeah. also realized that even if we had all the money for a computer, we couldn't buy one now because the graphics cards and things like that aren't available. Yeah. And the graphics card is what's going to cost you so much money right mm -hmm. now. Like, honestly, yep. like $6,000 is like way overkill. Like my friend who does television post-production built a computer now for like four or $5,000 last month. And it is well, like overkill for what he does like that's what we were looking for four to four to five thousand dollars like that yeah, was so like i think i think you can go way lower to be perfectly honest i think you can go into like the two thousand dollar range and get something that is going to be extremely you might have powerful. to go piecemeal per part per part you know you'd have to well, are you are, are you building intel or amd because intel uh, is immediately going to add like 50 percent charge onto your costs um, so. I thought we were doing AMD is what I was under. Because you said you had an i7 chip, so that's an Intel chip. So yeah, I didn't so know if you were it's switching over. It's an i7 and it only has four cores, and we can't upgrade it because the motherboard can't handle anything higher. Gotcha. Uh, okay. So yeah, it's it's the best CPU for the motherboard that we have. Well, let me know what kind of CPU it is because I have a motherboard that's a little older, that's a couple of years old that I've been trying to find a CPU for. So if it's one that would fit mine, I will buy it off of you and then you'll have some <laughs> money towards your new computer fund. I'm like, I'm 100% serious. Like I okay. just have an old motherboard that's a couple of years old that I've been trying to make it just a, a beater machine out of. I'll ask so. Nick and let you know. Okay, yeah. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think if you're, if for what you do and the stuff you do, like, Two to three thousand dollar budget should be like pretty solid to get. Well, something that's what we huge. spent on this one. This one was. 2, when you 000. said, "See, I didn't know that." When you said uh, a while ago, when you're talking about the four to five thousand, I was like, "Oh, she's getting a Mac for some reason," because that's usually oh, the no. ballpark for, <laughs> for a lot of that shit. But it, when you said it was a PC, I was like, "That is really overpriced for." I mean, not you're really. not going like to uh, Alienware or one of those custom places where they're putting like you know neon coolant in there. So it, oh no, we want liquid coolant light. as well. You do? <laughs> oh fuck yeah! Okay, you, but yeah, even you want so, liquid That's coolant. still going to be cheaper. Like that, yeah. Like I just that seems like very high. But I mean, like if you're pricing it out now, that price makes sense because everything is just so extraordinarily expensive. Like yeah, said, so like, that wasn't The top of the line video card is fourteen hundred dollars. Right? Yeah, exactly. Now. Like the top of the line video card. And if you can even find it. 
if you can find it yeah like yeah. you go on new egg and it's just like i was trying to spec out stuff for him just even motherboards and processors now <laughs> and even those have changed in price in the last week so it's very it's a uh not Damn. a buyer's market or a builder's no. market rather it, honestly like i think if someone wanted to get like a decent middle of the road streaming computer you could <laughs> probably just find one on new egg pre-built that still has all that shit in it but i don't know if I if I worked at Newegg and I had some pre-built computers with video cards I could take out of and sell for three hundred percent more than that computer's yeah. worth, I would totally do that. And Why just not break it down and sell components? <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck with your new PC. If anybody out there can help her out looking for some of these uh, some of these parts or, what, or or know somebody that has them, contact Zia and point her in the right direction. I'll okay. definitely keep an eye because I've been doing a lot of research for this stuff. Like I said, I'm helping other people do the same thing. Thank you, Gittles. That's awesome. All right, moving on to movie news. Um, this is aggravating. Really aggravating. So the whole saga around the Zack Snyder, it's not even a cut. They keep calling no, it the Zack Snyder re- cut of Justice League. The movie. Yeah, he just remade the movie. It went from, hey, we're going to cut, uh, put back the stuff that the uh, as the director originally had to have <laughs> cut out or the the you know the studio cut out whatever for time for whatever reason put it back in there to kind of explain the vision that he initially had for the movie because the movie was terrible and they were like oh everyone was excited they gave him the permission to put the stuff back in they were going to fix a couple of things in there oh it'll make it better then all of a sudden you you heard that there was going to be cast reshoots and like and then the cast were coming in then not only were they not doing reshoots they were doing new scenes like all new stuff was being put in, and then all of a sudden, Dark Side's in there. And you're like, what the hell's going on with this thing? They're just Dark like, Side should have been in there though. But, I right. thought we were going to get Dark Side, and those, but but no, I know what you're saying. I've been yelling about this this entire time. I didn't think but. we were going to get Dark Side because I figured they were going to go with one like Dark Side's like a Thanos. Dark Side comes yeah. a little later, you know. Going with Steppenwolf, even though I, I'm not a big fan of that character, it's like, all right, big enough bad for them to come together to fight, but then eventually would lead up to Dark Side, right? No. Now all this shit's being put together and slammed in, and every time we get an update, you're just shaking your head like, what is going on here? I have no enthusiasm for this. Then it was supposed the to band be. Band Steppenwolf? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Magic Carpet Ride just plays on a loop for two and a half hours. Drives you crazy. It does. That, that would drive the me villain. Nuts. That's how they're a villain. And it's only the first verse. They don't even play the chorus. It's just the first verse over and over and over. So then it was going to like, oh, it'll be out in March. Okay, and it's going to be four parts. So like each part will be about an hour. It'll be like a mini series. Okay. Oh, no, it's going to be uh, out in the fall. What? What? Why is it being pushed back? All right, they're pushing back to the fall. Then they're like, Oh, Zack Snyder comes out. It's not going to be a miniseries. I don't know why they were saying that. It's going to be one big full movie. Look, Lord of the Rings fans are probably the only people I think that would sit through a three-hour movie. Then they put the extended versions of, out of that, and you're looking at like nine and a half hours of, of all three movies together. They're the only ones I could think in the world will tolerate that. The regular public is not going to sit. There's a lot of superhero and, and comic book fans out there that are not going to sit through a movie, especially for the Justice League, for four fucking hours. So I don't know what Zack Snyder was talking about. Then they said, oh, guess what? There's going to be a new date for it. It's moving back to March. So it's going to be released March 18th of 2021 on HBO Max. So like, so like a, a month and seven days it's coming out. Correct. Right. Oh, wow. That's so faster than I thought. Here's where I got even more annoyed. So Zack Snyder posts something today, the day we're recording the show. He released a teaser to announce the trailer release Oh my God. He's buying a ticket to wait online to buy the product. Right. So he's like, you put something out there. Everyone's like, Zack Snyder, you're seeing it trend. So I go and click over to see it. I'm watching these little clips and it says, boom. And you're like, oh, cool. Something, Something big's happening. Trailer being released drops February 14th. I go, he put out a fucking teaser to the trailer to the show that's been moved around and been fucking, I'm mean, not show the movie, been bastardized for, you know, six ways to Sunday. I'll coin that phrase. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I like that. Six ways. I like it too. So it's like, oh, you see this clip? And now everyone's like, oh, Superman's wearing the black outfit. 
okay well i don't that doesn't mean fucking shit to me i mean I, i'd like to see it it looks kind of cool but it doesn't mean anything so the teaser's teasing the trailer which is the trailer will tease the show uh, the movie that's coming out in the month a fucking enough of this imagine if marvel did this shit no well, they would never marvel do this shit because they know what they're Marvel's- doing Marvel doesn't make anything that bad. No. <laughs> that it needs to have this much hype around a cut that is supposedly great. And what the fuck has Zack Snyder done that's so good? That's my curio. That's why, why are he's people- never done anything. Gittle's been that's very good. vocal about Zack Snyder in the past. It the only like thing that I'll say that like he's done that's like sort of okay is the Dawn of the Dead remake, and only because it's just an enjoyable movie, but it's not a good remake. But like I don't think he did a good job. I think anybody could have done what he did. I wanna see uh, what but Zach he's Snyder. no everything he's done has been an adaptation and the only thing he's done that was an original movie was like one of the worst pan movies ever so uh he, i just don't well, like him i've never understood the hype i've seen a lot of his movies and i've just never liked a single one. Oh, i liked 300 i'll oh say my that God, 300 with the guy with the deep voice i see i can't do it i sound like i'm from the south like 300 is, is 300 is, is like a novelty movie you, like you, if it's on TV or something like that, or it's on one of the movie channels, you, you'll sit there and watch it. I don't think anyone really seeks out 300 like they do Gladiator. You know, like people Gladiator love Gladiator. They movies. quote Gladiator. They'll seek it out. There's certain movies like this that people will say that is a tentpole movie for this genre or for liking. Nobody 300 thought everyone thought it was going to be like that. I remember Patrice oh. O'Neill. I got to find this bit too and put this back online. Patrice O'Neill did the review of 300. And how much he thought the fucking he, the trailer was going to be good, and then he watched the movie and said how terrible it, mo- it was, and then he goes two words, and there's a pause. And he goes, "Battle rhinos." <laughs> oh my Hilarious. god! I saw that movie at the Alpine Theater in Bay Ridge when we lived there. It was that theater that was like one block over? That was like the local yokel theater, like right oof. on Fifth that Avenue. That was the place. Yeah. That was the place. I remember it was right before 300. They had the trailer for the World Trade Center movie, and I literally thought people were going to burn the theater down while we were in there because, like, it was oh, only you know, wait. Was that the was that the W movie? No, the the World Trade Center one, like the movie with Nick Cage. Uh, oh wow! I forgot all about that one. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people did because it wasn't a good movie. Uh, <laughs> but I remember because that that played in Bay Ridge, which was like a big firefighter neighborhood, you know, very New York neighborhood. People were just throwing shit at the screens and screaming and yelling. And then 300 came on and it got worse because everyone hated the movie. Like everyone was just like, "Ah, fuck this! We saw a bad trailer. Now this movie sucks too." What uh, about Sucker Punch? Yo, that's the movie. That's his original movie. You have to see it. It's I so think I bad. have. I, I that. have seen Sucker Punch. I saw oh it in theaters. God. It's so bad. I have it. I should show it for Bad Movie Night. You should. Maybe I, th- I want to rewatch it. Sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I'll watch it for Bad Movie Night. I, I, uh, that movie I got at work. I think somebody we had promotional stuff or giveaways, or whatever. I have it. It's sitting on a stack with the movies of the girl with the dragon tattoo. The American version and the Swedish trilogy or four movies, whatever it is, is all sitting over there. And I never watched any of them. I should. Sucker I got, Punch for being so bad. I got a 22% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's pretty high. I feel like that's up there with his other movies. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, so I'm I'm trying to look. So I liked I liked Watchmen more than I think other people liked Watchmen. But again, I haven't seen it since it came out. I would be curious to see how some of these movies held up. But regardless, I just the whole hype behind him, like he made this amazing movie, blah, blah, blah. I just I don't believe it until I see it. Number one. Number two, it's already too late. He didn't have yep. a great cut. He he reshot and did all this other stuff. Whatever he had before must not have been good then. So there was and, no and, mythical Snyder cut. Fuck off. Yeah. And you know what's going to happen on Sunday? His teaser trailer is going to come out. He's gonna be like, that wasn't the director's cut of the teaser trailer of the real trailer. <laughs> I have to put out the, the director's cut of the teaser trailer of the other teaser trailer of the trailer of the remake. It's just like, oh, my God. It's like it's turning into a game of telephone. Enough. Like Batman <laughs> versus Superman, the director's cut. It's like, oh, yep. I'm going to get him, especially for that purple monkey dishwasher comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh One of the gosh. best lines to ever come out of that show. Uh, so uh, good. <laughs> so yeah, so that debacle does come out on HBO Max on March 18th of this year. Uh, some other movie updates for you: March 26th, which is the the week after, you can cleanse your palate of the Justice League with King Kong vs Godzilla. 
Ooh. I'm still very excited about that. I don't care how big the fucking ape is. I don't care about what everyone else is complaining about. It looks awesome. They're fighting on an aircraft carrier. I'm all about that. Yeah, I saw. Uh, well, someone posted on uh, on my Discord today that uh, the same director, Adam Wingard, who uh, did Bat or Batman, Godzilla versus uh, Godzilla versus Batman, Godzilla versus <laughs> King Kong. He apparently he's going to be doing a remake of Face Off. So the then Nick Jordan. Cage movie? Yeah, like wow. he's doing a remake of Face Off. So then Jordan on the Discord said, maybe it's going to be Face Off starring uh, King Kong and Godzilla, and they're going to take their faces off and they're going to be switched. And like, I want to see that movie now where King Kong and Godzilla switch faces. Kingzilla versus God Kong. Yeah. God Kong. <laughs> God Kong. They just hit, yeah, they hit big symbols together. Kong Kong. Uh, yeah, so that's March 26th, uh, and the Bob's Burgers movie is still coming out April Bob's 9th. I don't know what platform. I'm I'm guessing it's going to be... I don't know if Disney owns Bob's Burgers, too, because that was a Fox property. They might. So, I mean, because Bob's Burgers right now is on Hulu, so it could be Disney+. Plus. I don't know where that movie is going. Um rest of the stuff is still later in the year when uh, outside of WandaVision, Black Widow is May 7th. All the rest. How many episodes left my, to WandaVision? I don't know. We just four, had episode three or five. Four. I, th- I, I think there's <laughs> nine episodes. I love we had We've had three or four episodes. I think it was five. No, no. <laughs> no we no, just had episode five. Go, oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Last, <laughs> as the time you're uh, listening to this, watching this now, episode six is out. Uh, but as of last week, we had five episodes. Uh, we can go jump right into TV and streaming with that. We can start with that real quick. Um, episode five, boy, did it deliver. Did it, really it good. deliver? Because the first couple episodes, I was still all about it, but I was like, I don't fucking get what is going on here. I don't get the whole TV thing. I don't get all of They're this shit. They were building. They were building. They were laying the <clears throat> groundwork to start off a really good series. So here's some things, Gittles. Uh, they um, have officially crossed over into the Fox X-Men world. Because, and here's something I saw online which I didn't understand. At the very end of the episode, if you haven't seen it, spoilers, three, two, one, tough shit, we're talking about it. Um, At the end, there's a door, uh, the doorbell rings, she opens the door, and you just see this person standing there, kind of gray, silver hair. Now, who I thought it was and who a lot of the internet said they thought it was at first were totally different. I didn't see why they would think this. They thought it was Magneto. Yeah, people have been saying that they, I don't get they keep why talking they, about Magneto showing up and I and because because Magneto is Wanda is is her father in the comics. Up to a certain point they retconned a, a lot of that. They, they did. Yeah. So but that's the initially thing. Yeah, it know. was that Magneto was the was the father of Wanda and uh Quicksilver. Quicksilver, yeah. I forgot his name. P- uh, Pelfro? Pel- P- P- uh, Pietro. Pietro. And uh, so when they saw the silver hair, I'm like, oh, it's Quicksilver, right? People were like, oh, we thought it was going to be Magneto. Fan bases need to stop, okay? (laughs) Like, I get sometimes when there's a cause or or some, you know, reason justifying your outrage or your suggestions or whatever. But you don't write this shit. You'll never write this stuff. You can influence some of these things. and And then occasionally, if they're nice, they'll do fan service for you. But there's an artistic process to a lot of this shit. Stop saying that you know what is better with all of this stuff. Because we're not in that age where the networks were fucking this up anymore. You know, like, oh, they'll make a TV version or a movie adaptation. They're going to fuck it up. In some cases, that's true. But not with this stuff. Not with the Marvel stuff. They really have not had any major clunkers in any of this stuff. You may not have liked some of the movies, but... The way it ties together, the way everything's being explained, is being done just fine. Let it go. Let him do all of this stuff, right? Quicksilver shows up. But it's not the Quicksilver who died back in, uh, what was it, Captain America? It's not Aaron, Jol- it's not Aaron Johnson. Where, where were they introduced? Was it in Captain America or was it in uh, Age of Ultron that they were introduced? I think it was Age of Ultron. All right. So her brother died in Age of... Uh, yeah. yeah, it was because he died from Ultron. So yeah. uh, her brother died which is not how it goes in the comics or anything, but he died in the movies and then he has never been seen again. She's in this world that she's created in her in her head and now some people are thinking that she's not even controlling the world, like there's somebody else involved with her. <clears throat> um, we'll get into that in a second. The brother shows up, 
Like, hey, how you doing? And like, who's this guy? And he looks at Vision, and it's Quicksilver. It's Evan Robert, uh, Evan Peters, who's been on this show uh, from the X Men movies. And the one lady, brilliant line goes, she recast her brother. So yeah. that's the crossover. He's the X Men version of which, by the brother. way, my in my opinion is my favorite Quicksilver. Yes, he is my favorite thing about some of those really shitty X-Men movies that he was in. He is the best part about it. Those Quicksilver scenes are the best one. He is the perfect Quicksilver. The parts where they and have the actually, camera on him and he's just going like this and then you just see oh, everything it. behind him. Moving it looks like around a, Yeah, too. like it's some weird oh, roller coaster. Dude from uh, American Horror Story. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that one scene where he's like in the room and he's just like going through the room yep. and it's like- Taking all the his, bullets his, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, that was a That's really amazing. cool scene. What was that, Days of Future Past was that one? No. Days of Future Past was good. Uh, no. Which was that one Apocalypse? Was that that might have been Apocalypse. Yeah. I think that might have been Apocalypse. I'm all mixed up because I'm, I'm a casual viewer, so like I don't. Yeah. Apocalypse and, and Dark Phoenix. There's were, a lot of content out there, too. Terrible. I get mixed up. Right. Yeah, there's <laughs> too I much content. It. So all this shit's going on. Uh, there's theories that, and everybody kind of believes it. We've talked about it that Agnes, the neighbor, because she seems mm-hmm. self aware, like she fucked up her line and she goes, Oh, do you want to retake yeah. that? And that kind of she knows what's going signaled on. to Wanda that this wasn't a character she created. Um is uh Agatha Harkness, which is another powerful witch that has, you know, fought with and, and manipulated and, and other shit with Wanda in the comic books. But I heard a theory that I didn't even think of and it's so far fetched, but it could be possible. They think something else is influencing that world that she's creating, that some of this stuff is not under her her control as much as she thinks it is. Something else stepped in. Um, mm-hmm. There's a character that's sort of like the devil. Um, Mephisto? Yeah, Mephisto. Well, because in the comics also, Mephisto, her two twins, her twin boys, they're, pieces, they're made from pieces of Mephisto's soul. Oh, didn't know that. Yeah. See, that's where th- now we're hitting those weird offshoots mm-hmm. of things. Even though it's not an offshoot to people who read it, like they've it's been around for a while. I know I've seen that he's he's fucked with uh, the Fantastic Four. He's fucked with a whole bunch of other people. Spider Man yeah. at some point he was involved with, but for mainstream public, like this was like introducing Guardians of the Galaxy. Everyone goes, "Why are you introducing them? Nobody's going to know them. Nobody's going to care." And then they be they're one of the most beloved properties that they have. This is mm-hmm. an offshoot for the adult side, which is fantastic because this I guy has posed as Satan. He's posed as a lot of stuff. And then I was watching a video where they're like, look at all the satanic stuff that was showing up in the last episode that you missed. And I was like, wow, they really are going into dark because this is where Doctor Strange is going to start coming in. This is where the multiverse of madness is going to start coming in. And I'm so excited. I can't wait for the new episode, which is out now as you're listening to this. I haven't seen it yet. I can't wait for it. Um, I can say tonight. fuck you to Screen Rant and, and Nerdist by uh, last week I was doing all the editing and everything I went to bed it was like 6 in the morning and I happened to see some of the alerts on, on my uh, Twitter there and Screen Rant had a thing it's like what that ending meant for going forward for Wanda and I go it's 6 a.m. it just got released at 3 a.m. which is noon on West Coast time three hours people haven't even watched this thing unless they were up in the middle of the night nobody's watched this fucking thing it's six in the morning they're already misleading and spoiling with the headline of their article before they went into details yep that's what they do they want to get their stuff out there first that's why that's what it's all about is getting your shit out there first i hate all of them i don't i i uh, look i used to go to screen Rant for some of the updates and things now i just purposely bypass them some of these, just because I am so mad with how they spoil shit in the headlines. And Nerdist became that way, too. Once Hardwick left and sold the whole fucking thing, um, they really went into this whole kind of, you know, gotcha headline kind of shit where they're just, you know, sucking you in and then blowing everything uh, before you even get a chance to see it. Yep. Fucking dumb. But anyway, what were we talking about? TV stuff. So we did the WandaVision. We did, uh, oh, Clarice is coming out on CBS. Are you going to watch this, Kittles? Um, probably not. Uh, I was interested in it because, uh, you know, when the Hannibal show came out, I just assumed that Clarice would be a major part of that show. People so liked the, Clarice- the Hannibal show, though. It, used to, it was on NBC for like four seasons, I think. Yeah, so like when all this came out, I was like, oh, there's a Clarice show, but isn't there a Hannibal show? And so I looked into it because I never really watched much Hannibal and mostly because I didn't like the video transitions. Like I didn't like the way the windshield wiper thing would like wipe things on and off. I just didn't like the stylistic choices, but I've heard the show was good. 
Uh, so when it came out that they were doing a Clarice show, my God, they're doing a spinoff of Hannibal. And it turns out that the original author of Silence of the Lambs uh, didn't give permission to use Clarice as a character on the Hannibal show. So that's why they never had Clarice on the Hannibal show. It was like some other woman. And I guess they saved it because they were doing this show, which was the uh, Clarice specific show, which I don't know if I want to see. Like Hannibal was the, definitely the more interesting character. Like right. Clarice was a great character. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but you they, know, Jodie Foster both one of the of best roles yeah. I've ever seen. But like, I don't see how that works as a show. Like I, ca- I care more about. Well, from the uh, teaser, they're showing James Gum. It's, it's Clarice explains it all. Yeah. Um, they're showing him, you know, leading up to him, I guess. Um, but wouldn't it be great if you find out that they didn't get permission to use Hannibal? So it's just her now without the, the main draw to the show? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought he froze. I was like, God damn it. But he not. I guess not. Oh, well. Uh, what else is coming out here? Season nine and practical jokers is out and available for, if you want to check that, they got approved for season 10, which is fantastic. Love those guys. Uh, this Sunday, Gittles, the return of, uh, last week tonight with John Oliver. Oh, finally. Yeah. I'm excited to see that. Uh, NBC Peacock, we talked about last week, they spent all that money to get the WWE Network that is going to be merging over to Peacock at some point. I don't know exactly when, but they've got the entire WWE library now going over to Peacock. Uh, February 16th is Young Rock. Dwayne Johnson has a uh, show coming out. Uh, it's going to be on the network and then it goes on the streaming service, uh, I guess, the the day after. Um, it's about his life growing up with his father being a very famous wrestler and then them you know living town to town up and down the dial all the way up to where the rock is now he narrates it's sort of like um you know how uh james parson does uh, young sheldon that's on cbs where you're seeing his younger life but it's older him narrating the thing or how i met your mother where bob mm-hmm. saget was narrating and it was showing his younger life uh for the whole sitcom i think it's a similar thing to that but it's going to be all about his life uh, a lot of Hawaii stuff, Zia, so you can look forward to that. February 25th is the Punky Brewster reboot, starring Punky Brewster herself. She'll be in there. Uh, nothing much on HBO Max other than what we just said. Disney Plus, February 19th, all five seasons of the original Muppet Show will be available. And March 19th has been announced thanks to the Super Bowl. Their trailer on the, during the Super Bowl was fantastic. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier will be available. So Marvel stuff is finally uh, moving. Finally! Coming, finally. Been it's waiting. been a long fucking time. Speaking of a long fucking time, so is this show. So we should get out of here and, and uh, wrap all of this up. Let's do the plugs. Zia, what do you have? Go! Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Zealand. I stream Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. I just made a really awesome pink grapefruit and ginger grapefruit glazed bunt cake. I haven't tasted it yet, but it smells awesome. It looks awesome. It's going to be awesome. And then Sundays are snack days. Monday, we play games. Tuesdays, I have a new segment called Zia Next Tuesday, where we watch... Hey. <laughs> I, like hey. I, I, coined, I coined the abbreviation, by the way. We're making Z- no. we're making the uh, the Zunt shirts for you. The the Zunt shirts. Um, that was actually that's been brought up a long time ago on my stream. It was. Yeah. I thought I came up with it. The beginning. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. <laughs> Damn it! I thought I came up with that. <laughs> I can totally I can I get a, a Zia Rocks copy of one? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, I like yeah. it. Sorry, that was that was not good. I should be that shot was, in the face. The logo is <laughs> the logo is X U N T. You know, spaced out, and then it says Zia next Tuesday. Yeah, Zia next Tuesday. Boom. So anyway, that's a, that's been a really fun segment for if you're a sub to the channel, you can submit videos that you want to watch. We have to obviously no music, and it can't be anything crazy. It has to be from YouTube, so nothing sexual and nothing too violent. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's uh, that's been awesome. Follow me there. Follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Zia underscore Land, and go check out some gaming news segments at the. It is. Mega Cat Studios YouTube, and they're just real quick. I'll do one minute, one to two minutes max of just uh, retro gaming new stuff. All right. Giddles, what do you have? 
uh, Gittle Base on the Twitter, Instagram, Xbox Live, World of Warcraft, whatever that thing is called, Blizzard thing, and then uh, <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Gittle Base uh, for Number of the Feast every two every uh, Sunday at 2 p.m. Uh, this week it's Valentine's Day, so I'm still trying to brainstorm an episode. Uh, I was cooking of live making... beef hearts. Well, I was thinking live beef hearts, and then I was thinking maybe like beef heart burgers. And I was like, maybe I don't go in the heart. Maybe that's like a little too number of the feast. And I was like, maybe I do fresh, uh, fresh made sausages and stuffed clams because it's Valentine's Day. I get it. Yes. You get it? Sounds fresh sausages delicious. and stuffed clams? <laughs> right. That's what everyone wants on Valentine's Day. And then next week, hot dogs and donuts. Yep, that's hot dogs and donuts. Well, that's for the single people. And that's Valentine's also Day. Jackie Martling's <laughs> CD, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, but that's it. Number of the feast. Come hang out. Cooking lots of stuff. It's been fun. Did a Super Bowl special last week. That's Went too good. long. I was like uh, Krusty the Clown in the desert trying to stay on the air for 24 hours, just picking up things. I mean, like, look at this spoon. Like, I had nothing else to do. Uh, <laughs> Because once you stream for a couple hours, you just start looking around the room for things to be like, hey, check it out. Because after a while, it just turns into show and tell. Yeah. You're like, oh, I have this because I have nothing left to talk about. It's yeah. Like fil- it's like a filibuster. Filling off your band aid. Like, look at my boo boo. It's like, all right, I'm unsubscribing from this guy. Yeah. Done. It's I'm crazy how how quickly a five hour stream goes by, but then you realize at the end how much you've been talking for like five oh hours God. and you're like, holy shit. It, it does drain you a little bit. Yes, yeah, you sit does. down or you have like a drink of water. You're like, holy shit, I haven't drank anything in hours. Like how was like no one even like been on the stream and been like, please drink, blink, do use, something. <laughs> use like, the, uh, <laughs> use your channel points for hydrate. That, I swear to God, that keeps me hydrated because I'll forget about it until people use their channel points to hydrate. And then I'm like, oh, that's right. I can drink water. Uh, well, I was thinking of changing my channel point names to Gitcoins, hoping to get in on that cryptocurrency. I love it. <laughs> Gitcoins. Oh, my God, you should. Yeah. So I got to come up with a cool logo that's uh, like Dogecoin, but like I'm the Doge. <laughs> Is it <laughs> Doge or Doge? Uh, it doesn't matter. Doge. Yeah. It took me the longest time. I was calling it Doge and then Dog and then Doug and then I found out money. it was Doge. It's a complete waste of money. Don't don't buy any of that stuff. No, it's it's a joke thing. It's uh, a joke. Stop cracking open this tender egg. I see you there. Ooh. Uh, for me, it's E Rock Radio across the board on social media. Follow me there. But for the show, it's Eric Nagel across the board on all the social media platforms. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the YouTube channel where you can see the video version of this program. If you want to be a part of this program, six five one Smithers six five one seven six four eight four three seven. Yes, I keep looking down because I don't remember the phone number, but it's right here, so I can read it to you. And to you listening on the audio, there, you had no idea that I was looking in there. I just had to break that third, fourth, fifth wall and let you know that I don't know how to do this job after 20 something years. But anyway, uh, that being said, we need to get out of here uh, till the next time, everybody. Be excellent to each other and have a wonderful time. We'll be seeing you. He's Eric Nagel. That was really cool what you did. Yeah, Eric, we're going to stop ignoring you now. We didn't think that by pretending you didn't exist, you would really change, but you really have. Well, anyway, we just want to let you know. Talk to you tomorrow. Yes, see you, Eric. Alas, we're out of time. Follow It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For ways to listen to the show, go to itseriknagel.com. And remember to tell two friends so they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. And those two friends can tell two friends. Well, you get the idea. Keep it real, homies.